Hello, everybody. Two weeks have passed, and we are back. It's what is tonight? Well, it's Monday night, right? And oh. we're back for another another episode of Talk More Talk, a solo Beatles of video cast. I'm one of your four co-hosts, Tom Hunyadi. You may know me from my other show, Two Legs, a Paul McCartney podcast. And then on tonight's episode, we are doing part two of our look at Rob Sheffield's 100 Greatest Solo Beatles Song Countdown. And as we said on the last episode, this is just his list. So don't get mad at us. Get mad at him. <laughs> but anyways, uh, before we get to that list, so we're gonna I'm going to introduce my three co-hosts who I'm so fortunate that I get to do this show with uh every other week. And uh first up, you know him from all of his many shows and podcasts and YouTube channels. He's everywhere. Uh, he's got his own uh you uh he's got his own website, Ken Michaels Radio, as well as Ken Michaels Radio YouTube channel, right? He's also got every little thing, uh though his radio syndicated radio show where he does the, just that play every little thing and his podcast with his buddies Al Cozen and uh Darren DeVivo he's Ken Michaels and he's he's also the co-host of things we said today the wonderful podcast that's been going since 2012 can you believe that yes Ken Amazing. how are you doing I'm doing great and as shown on your shirt there life is just a bowl of cherries for you Yes, this might have something to do with tonight's show. I don't know, but uh, we'll we'll get to that hmm. later. Next I wonder up, what that could be. <laughs> next up <clears throat> is another YouTube sensation. He is Joe Mayo, other otherwise known as Mean Mister Mayo, on his uh, on his regular YouTube channel. He does a lot of great videos. He he's almost live every morning with his. Um, with his what cup of Joe live with uh, Mayo shows that uh, he does with a friend of ours, the King of Chaos, Danny Ambrosia. Uh, there you go. There's Ambrosia. a plug for you, Danny. There's a Danny plug for Ambrosia. you. He, he, yeah. he's, he, he's he's in the yeah, comments Ambrosia. right now. Yeah, he's in the comments. There you go. He's like Danny. Ambrosia. Yeah, <laughs> I, I, I know. I said the band Ambrosia. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways. Uh, he's got rant videos. He's got record store videos. He does open it, or uh, he does uh, re box opening boxes, reveals what's inside of them. Sometimes he gets something from the Lennon's estate, which he which he did, and yeah. he showed it and he reviewed it. Joe Mayo, what's going on, my friend? Oh, well, thank you for that that crazy introduction, but it was great. <laughs> yes. uh, yes. not much there, uh, Tom. I'm happy to do this uh, second part. Excited because we're doing the top down. Top That's 50. right. And That's right. We are doing. With... Yep. And looking forward to it with you, of course, and Ken and Kit. Excellent. Last but not least, she is the queen. That's it. That's all you got to know. So, you know, so, you know, there's Sting, there's Prince, there's Madonna, and then we got Queen. <laughs> and uh, you know her as Kid O'Toole. She's uh, she's everywhere. Poppermost of the Poppermost, right? Uh, her her new show that she also does besides uh, besides this one, Talk More Talk. She's uh, she's the author of, of what the Michael Jackson FAQ book. She's got the songs they were singing uh, book as well. Um, Kit, are you, are you you have a new book coming out? I mean, I mean, you've got so many things. I mean, don't say it yet, but <laughs> really make a shorter title, please. <laughs> Anyways, she's she's busy. She's teaching classes. She's she's guesting on other people's shows. She never stops. She never sleeps. She works twenty four seven or eight days a week, however you want to say it. Our own queen, Kit O'Toole. Kit, it's good to see you again. <laughs> well, that's a great introduction. Hi, Tom and uh, Ken and Joe and everybody out there. I am actually working on some projects that okay. uh, that hopefully I will be able to say some things about in the near future. Um, but uh, but yes, hello, everybody out there. And, um, you know, hopefully we won't be cutting off Piano Man tonight, but you yeah. never know. <laughs> you never know what's going to happen on this We're show. Off the number one song. That's, that's right. right. <laughs> yeah, that's what we'll do. <laughs> you never know. <laughs> and the song. Anyway. Yeah. 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 We'll just cut that off. Bring us yeah. a song, Yura. Boom, gone. Yeah. Anyways. <laughs> Like I said, we want to thank you all for joining us for this. Please give us your thoughts of this list as as we talk about it. You can talk about, uh, we'll probably be going like we did last week in chunks of 10. Uh, and we'll give our thoughts on that and that and that segment there. And um, we'll, we look forward to, to uh, reading your comments as well. 
before we do that, we we might talk about a new song. I don't know, Ken, if that's in the news or not, but uh, there's a lot of stuff going on that you're going to report right yes. now. And just when I thought I had all the news ready, <laughs> in the last week, it's been fast and furious. But today, yeah. there was news. If you looked at the Beatles website, thebeatles.com, you would have seen on top the words at last, dot, 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 four squares underneath it with nothing in the squares and um makes you think that let it be is coming and underneath the four squares it had disney plus the logo for that so um even though there hasn't been an official word they're dropping hints already so i've heard probably may actually there was a date of may 9th possibly that it might stream on disney plus and hopefully from that we'll get a physical release later in the year for let it be but hopefully we'll find out something very soon about this but you know it's they do this all the time especially paul he drops hints before things actually happen right so it gets everybody to talk and there's a buzz for a while but we should hear something about the let it be film coming out and first uh, as a stream on disney plus so exciting news right there very exciting like you said it like it says finally you know that's yeah. that's it for yeah. me it's just like a lot of us has been been begging for this and it's been done for for decades mm-hmm. uh, ever since the let it be naked uh cd i mean it's been ready to go it will be interesting if there is a physical release if there'll be bonus material and certainly if they will improve upon the picture quality and use any of peter jackson's right. uh, software to clean up the audio or and and the video okay. um so we'll see but we're going to hear something pretty soon, it looks like. All know. right. As I'm sure, hopefully, all of you know, Ringo's new song, February Sky, came out last Friday for streaming and downloading on all platforms. Ringo's new EP, Crooked Boy, with four new songs written and produced by Linda Perry. Uh, first will come out on Record Store Day, which is this coming Saturday. That'll be on limited edition Marble Vinyl. Now, on April the 26th, the EP will be released digitally. And then, May 31st, a whole month later, uh, the EP will come out on black vinyl and on CD, which you can pre-order now. Plus, the Amoeba Record Store in Hollywood will have an exclusive red vinyl 7-inch single on April the 18th, where there will be a listening event right there to hear the EP uh, starting at 11 a.m. Uh, Ringo was quoted as saying, Linda made me a great EP. She produced it in her studio and then sent me the tracks and I added the drumming and my vocals. February Sky is great, very moody. But since Linda wrote these specifically for me, it of course has to have a positive peace and love element. And uh, you guys have heard the song, I'm sure. What do you think yes. of it? Tom? I love it. Oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> no, go ahead, Queen. Okay. I I love it. Um, from the first time I heard it, I, I thought this, this is just, he, Ringo sounds fantastic. Mm. I love that there isn't as much of an effect on his voice. Yeah. You know, so you really hear him. Um, I really like the lyrics. I, I thought, you know, it's, it's about optimism. Yes. We've heard this message before from Ringo, but I thought this was done in a very clever way. I like the image of the February sky, you know, that we want to clear the, you know, no more February skies, you know, clearing the gloom and doom. Love the production. Um, you know, it sounds modern, um, but it still is just some good rock and roll. Um, you know, suits Ringo very well. I am excited about this album. I just thought this was a strong, strong single. This is the first single in a while where I've been really excited uh, mm. about, about Ringo. Um, about his sound and everything so loved it okay good to hear mm-hmm. um, your thoughts well i wish i was excited it was as excited as as the queen um I, I did enjoy it the second time a little bit more the second time i i played i wish maybe it should have been called february skies because that's what isn't that what he sings in the uh in the, in the lyrics yeah. instead of February sky, but that's, sound I mean, like that's, it. that's, that's yeah. nitpicking right there, but yeah, it is kind of moody. Um, I noticed, you know, you noticed that right off the bat and, um, 
but other than that, I, I just don't, um, I don't love it yet. Maybe once I get the EP and hear it with the other songs, um, you know, hopefully my, my, my mind will, will change a little bit, but that now I'll listen to it a couple more times. Uh, as I said, this is just the, after the first couple times playing it, um, it, it didn't, um, you know, strike me as, as something. And it caught me a little bit off guard too. I was not expecting something like that. So yeah. I will give props, uh, give props for, for Linda and Ringo for, for, for giving us something like that. But, uh, but again, I need to uh, spend a little bit more time with it before I can really, you know, say whether I like it or not. Okay. All right. Joe, what did you think? Um, I, I'm glad that Tom said that. Cause I didn't want to be the only one that didn't love it yet. But I, it's it, it's it's okay. I don't dislike it. But um, when I heard it, um, first thing it, it didn't grab me much at first, and I thought Ringo's voice, which I've you know I'm always supportive of Ringo. You know, I, I Ringo's Ringo, and I I like him for what for who he is and how he puts the song across and everything. But I thought his voice sounded a little rough for him, and then I thought, well, maybe because it's time. It's just more natural, yeah. <laughs> which is a which is a positive thing, right? But I do like Linda Perry, and I do like the work she's done with Ringo, and I'm looking forward to more of her stuff. So the part I did like, I did like about it, was when she came in with him with the the chorus. That's the part of the song I I really kind of enjoyed more. The rest of it, not as much, but it is a a positive uplifting message and well you might be tempted to say oh not again with Ringo but it's not the same shtick so to speak that he's using over and over it's huh. it's different a right. different approach to that so right. I think it's a grower for me but right now I'm like eh. but a lot of people from what I've seen seem to really like it yeah yeah you you got a point there it, it'd probably be a grower for me too but yeah that's probably the word I should have should have used yeah I liked it after a couple listens a lot and I especially love the production, and I love that lead guitar part, which oh, yeah, that's good too. I forgot that. right through as soon as you as soon as you hear the song, it really has a bit of an edge to it. And I like the fact that Ringo's vocals sound natural and live, and no processing, not far away from the microphone, not not too much uh, reverb around his voice. Um, that's one of the few things that I've complained about where Ringo yeah. is concerned. I really want to hear his voice up front and sounds really good here and it's nice kind of like what you said joe very positive message without necessarily saying peace and love in the song it's nothing not cliche wrong, really nothing wrong with saying peace and love but sometimes it's it's just too repetitive in his music yeah. and this way he's getting a message across that's similar without using the phrase okay mm -hmm. but uh good start for me yep. i'm always happy to hear anything new from ringo some uh, Ollie Perry said in the comments it has a bit of an oasis sound. It's it, a little yeah. bit. Well, yeah. I mean, it's a little bit, but but I would say in in general, it just has a bit of an edgier sound to it, and yeah. and more modern. That's why I loved it. I mean, yeah. not because it sounded like oasis, but I mean just in general that it has that edgier sound. And I, from the first first listen, he he had me. I love okay. it. <laughs> All right. And don't forget, Ringo resumes touring with the All-Star Band on May 22nd at the Venetian in Las Vegas. He's got 12 dates coming, and that'll run through June the 9th. Ten of those are on the west coast of the U.S., with two in Mexico City. Paul McCartney performed live at a tribute concert for Jimmy Buffett last Thursday night at the Hollywood Bowl. Paul performed Let It Be, being backed by the Eagles. And the show was broadcast, I'm told, on Margaritaville TV mm. and also on Sirius. And I've seen the video of uh, Paul, which I posted on my Facebook page. What did you all think of uh, Paul's performance? Uh, why don't we start with Joe? Well, I haven't seen it. It's okay. funny. <laughs> Today has been starting. No, um, I, I, you know, I was hoping I wouldn't be the first. I can't believe it. I haven't, I haven't seen it. I mean, I heard good things. Again, you hear vibes when you do a channel, and most of the vibes are fairly positive, saying you know it's it's pretty good. You know, I know sometimes Paul can be hit and miss. I've heard that it sound he sounds pretty good. Um, I, I don't know why I haven't run to hear it. I think I, I suspect it's because again, I remember <clears throat> uh, Live Aid. I think in 1985. When Paul's mic went out, right. but wow, he's doing "Let It Be." This is great. 
you know, I don't want to hear let it be. Or I'm not I'm not rushing to hear let it be again, uh, you know, anymore. If he was doing what you're doing, I would have been there in a in a flash or something <laughs> like that, you know. Something no, but I mean I, I have to hear it because I'm cur- I'm curious to hear how he how he did. And I'm hearing that he did well. All right, Tom. I think it was a wasted opportunity for him. I think he should have done my my gummy just kicked in or something yeah. like that. After all, this was a tribute uh, to uh, to Jimmy Buffett. I mean, maybe he felt like the song was appropriate for that night. If that's the case, then hey, who are we to tell Paul McCartney what to do at a concert? Hmm. But um, but again, it's uh, you know I I I haven't listened to it yet. I, I am curious to to see you know how he sounded with the Eagles. I'm sure it was fantastic. Um, our friend Joan Borelli, who's been on our show a few times, uh, went to that event and she's she had a blast, and uh, she said uh, Paul did a fantastic job. Okay, and Kit? Yeah, I haven't seen it either, but yeah, I was kind of I I have to agree with Tom. I mean, yeah, why let it be? I mean, that that does seem like a wasted opportunity, as you said. Why didn't he do you know my gummy just kicked in or even um oh what's that one he did the uh, bubble bubbles up. Yeah, you know, cause, um, as because uh, as Paul said, he thought that was one of Jimmy's best songs, and he talked about that a lot. That would have been a nice song, you know, to do. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, it just seemed kind of an odd choice, unless, as you said, Tom, maybe he thought that you know would be a nice song. Yeah, I mean, if, if, that's, if that's like one of Jimmy Buffett's favorite songs, then you know, so be yeah, it. Yeah, exactly. That could have been a, one of Jimmy's favorites. So you know, we don't know. Um, but, uh, but I agree. I've, I've heard great things that is that, uh, he was in pretty good voice, uh, that night. So I do want to see it, but yeah, it kind of, I, I was very surprised. And maybe that's why, like you said, Joe, I wasn't like running to, to catch it. Cause I thought, oh no, he didn't let it be again, but, <laughs> uh, but I will. <laughs> Funny how you can get spoiled, you know? I know. I mean, I, that's terrible. That's like, like, oh no, he didn't. Like, hey you know? Jude again. No, no more. Hey Jude. I mean, it's just, that sounds <laughs> terrible to say, but, but I, I will. No, no. Uh, I will catch it, and particularly with the Eagles backing them, that's a, that's very interesting. But I'm just surprised that yeah they did that, unless that was you know one of Jimmy Buffett's favorite songs or something. Well, um, Paul gave a really nice introduction before he went and performed "Let It Be," mm-hmm. and he said that the week before Jimmy passed away, he performed a couple of songs for him, and that was one of them. Mm-hmm. "Let It Be," so that oh, could be go. reason. Okay, yeah. let it be there. that explains like uh, the rest of you. You know, I hate to be critical of, of Paul, but it would have been nice for him to do any Jimmy Buffett song. Yeah, but right. he really ever does that. Whenever he performs with someone else, you know, if he's with Billy Joel, it'd be cool if Paul did a Billy Joel song with Billy right. Joel. It's always his song. So, um, yeah, but his voice to me at times was good. At times it was shaky. Mm. But, you know, the most important thing is that he was there for a great cause, you know. Mm good friends with jimmy much yes. better friend to jimmy than we realized you know in the last few years also in news get ready for a new letting and mccartney song <laughs> That's mccartney, mccartney, lennon, this mccartney <laughs> lennon this time mccartney <laughs> lennon this time mccartney <laughs> lennon this time after all this is the 21st century <laughs> It looks like James McCartney has just made available for streaming a new song called Primrose Hill, which he co-wrote with Sean Lennon. You can listen to the song on YouTube and Spotify. It is very good. Very melodic. Um, Does Primrose, Primrose Hill sound familiar? Well, it's the name of a park in London that the Beatles were considering to perform their new material from the Get Back Let It Be sessions. But, of course, they ended up on the Apple rooftop. It's also mentioned in the lyrics of what Paul McCartney song? Oh. The Earth Girl. Primrose Hill. Oh, uh, and producer oh, James is David Kahn, who produced uh, Driving Rain for Paul and part of Memory Almost Full. Thanks to Chris Bourgeois, I think that's how you pronounce his name, in Canada. Uh, for that information, I posted that song. Go check it out. It's really a nice song. A lot of people are raving about it. They like yeah. it better than a lot yeah. of other James's songs. I think James's stuff is terrific. Um, mm-hmm. According to John Lennon's website, the Mind Games box set is now given a July 12th release date. Still with 72 tracks, six CDs, two Blu-rays with new stereo and Dolby Atmos mixes. 
we're going to talk a little bit with Joe because I know he did uh, a show on uh, the EP that he got an advanced copy of. Yeah. Um, the Associated Press is reporting that the Cirque du Soleil Beatles show Love, running in Las Vegas since its premiere in the summer of 2006, will be making its final curtain call on July 7th, Ringo's birthday. More than 11 and a half million people have seen the show, a portrayal of the Beatles' history and music with aerial stunts and whimsical dance numbers on a colorful 360-degree stage. The show is running at the Mirage Hotel, and it will be closing as part of their renovation plans to rebrand itself as the Hard Rock Las Vegas. Tickets for the final shows are about to go on sale for that. Sad to hear this. Love to it's, see a great, it it's a great show. It, it really is. I'm, I was fortunate to see it twice. Me too. And, um, you know, and I, I think if you, you, like you said, you still have time to see it. And if you have the means to do it, please do. Yeah. All right. A brand new book comes out June 18th. It's always on Beatles. Yeah. Things happen. On Paul's birthday. It's called When We Was Fab, The Beatles Australasian Tour, 1966, by Greg Armstrong and Andy Neal. As June will mark the group's 60th anniversary of their historical and hysterical Australasian tour, it remains deeply significant to the baby boomers who witnessed it firsthand and the millennials who wish they had been there for it. The tour is continuously celebrated as a major social landmark for Australia and New Zealand, a huge and lasting step in the advancing development of youth culture and a major highlight of the Beatles' remarkable career. Again, that's coming out June the 18th. There is an all-star country band called The Front Men, made up of Richie McDonald, formerly of Lone Star, Larry Stewart of Restless Heart, and Tim Rushlow, formerly of Little Texas. They just released a new album with a song called Beatles and Eagles. It's a song about a guy who's broken up with his girlfriend, and when going through the boxes she left behind, he found Beatles and Eagles albums. And it's a good night to play some Beatles and Eagles music. It says it's going to be a Beatles and the Eagles under the needle kind of night. Lots of <laughs> references to Beatles and Eagles songs and the names of members of both groups in the song. If you're mm -hmm. also an Eagles fan, you should love this song. It's from their self-titled album, The Front Men. Thanks to our buddy Scott O'Rourke for coming through with that news. A few things here. Lawrence Struber will be giving two concerts next weekend. On April 20th at the Artisan Guitar Show in Harrisburg, Pennsylvania at 2 p.m., followed by a show at the Cutting Room in New York City on April 21st, also at 2 p.m. Our good friend Jeff Slate has a new CD coming out the last day of summer, and that's due at May the 17th. You've heard me mention about a, um, a festival that happens the end of every year for George Harrison, formerly called Harry Fest, now called George Harrison Tribute. They just announced a new date for this year, November 2nd at White's in Westport, Massachusetts, starting at 3.30 p.m. Don't forget Record Store Day is this Saturday. You won't be able to reach Tom or Joe. They'll be out of touch with the rest of the universe that day. <laughs> no, I won't. I already got some what I want. Pretty much. That's true. I just need Crooked Boy. You want to say a few words about the uh, Mind Games EP since you did a whole show on it? Well, yeah, I just figured just briefly. I mean, I, I was fortunate enough to get sent uh, one of each because it's, it's available, going to be available uh, on Saturday. It's going to be black vinyl or in this and glow in the dark vinyl. And this one's glow in the dark. It's not going to glow. Wait a minute. I don't have, I can't, if I had a light here, it might. It is glow in the dark. <laughs> and I have a short video. You look at my video shorts and then you'll see uh, where it glows. Yeah, you know, and there are four tracks, as we probably know. And I've played this a couple of times. Mind Games, Ultimate Mix, which is really basically the one we know. Only this is really amazingly uh, like uh, clear. And John's vocal up front, uh, really. And it, it sounds really good. Hmm. And it's very, I don't know what you would call it, warm sounding, you know. I'm the Greatest, which I think uh, I've learned this is the same version. It's been a while. So I have it up here, the box of the Lennon Anthology. Although uh, the speed is different, I think it's uh, more corrected now. It has mm -hmm. George on it, Ringo on it, and Klaus Vorman, you know, a run through with John, you know, uh, mm -hmm. singing. And then on the other side, 
I Sue Miss N, I'm Sorry, which I just love that song. I say it every time it mm-hmm. comes up. Um, again, John's voice so clear up front. It, it, not drenched in a lot of the reverb, although I think that works sometimes on the Mind Games album. But this is just it's just a different experience. And I always love David Spinoza's guitar on it, yeah. um, which is always great in that guitar solo at the end. But I've never been as aware of as John singing the song that you get to hear the sublime playing along with, with it as as clear as it is on here. So I really appreciated that. And lastly, we have a long version, uh, outtake, take five of You Are Here, which is like 10 or 11 minutes long. You really? know? And it's got some different verses in it. So, yeah, this was uh, quite enjoyable. All right. Excellent. That's interesting. I didn't know the take of uh, You Are Here was that long. Yeah, the one I think I think it's, again, I can't swear to it, but I think that was also on this set. But it was, it's only five minutes long on the set. This is double, double that. Okay. It, so it might have been a shorter portion of it, maybe. I'm just grasping here. Hmm. Yeah. Glad you said what you did about I Assume Ascent because it's such a terrific. Oh, I always rave yeah. about that. I just love it. One of my earliest interviews was with David Spinoza, and I think I said it here on this show was one take, his guitar part on that song. Oh, mm. terrific. Wow. The way that song ends with his guitar playing is just so perfect. You can song. hear it so good here. You, too, you know, really good. You can yeah. hear it. Also, like I said, we got the uh, the seven inch marble. Uh, release of February Sky coming out for Record Store Day. We have um, yeah. Wonder Wait, Wall- I thought that well, sound. it's on Crooked Boy. Crooked Boy EP is coming out. I don't know if there's going to be this a single with it. No, no, the February Sky that that single's going to only be available at Amoeba. Oh, really? Yeah, that that's my working? understanding that it's only available in store at Amoeba. That February Sky singles. No, I think the one that's on Record Store Day is a different one. It's marble, and the one for Amoeba is a red vinyl. Yeah, but I'm saying um, it's a oh, marble wait, for, wait a minute, for the Crooked Boy EP. Yeah, of the EP. Yeah, right. That's With the February EP. Sky on it. But the one yeah. on Record Store Day is supposed to be for February Sky. It's a single for that. I don't think it's the entire EP. Oh, I think it is. Well, we'll, we'll, no. we'll find out. Somebody yep. tell <laughs> tell us in the comments. <laughs> yeah, in the comments, if uh, if anyone knows. And we got the picture disc versions of the George Harrison albums coming out for Wonderwall Music and Electronic Sound. And we also have, for those of you that go further, deeper into the Beatles solo catalog, Elton John's Caribou coming out. The demo, it is the demo for Snookaroo. Snookaroo. Oh, nice. Yeah. And I'll say this since our next show is going to be after this date. Don't forget Let It Roll, songs by George Harrison, is reissued on April the 26th. Mm. Okay. Um, we're going to close with uh, news of two passings to report of note. First, John Sinclair has died. John was a champion of legal marijuana, a, co- a counterculture hero and poet. He died uh, not this past Tuesday, the week before that, of congestive heart failure at the age of 82. The Detroit News reports Sinclair was an influential activist who was best known for his fight toward legalizing marijuana and for his role as band member a band manager i'm sorry for the mc5 the davison native was also a champion of civil rights and co-founder of the radical anti-racist group the white panther party his representative matt lee says he was on the forefront of the marijuana movement that's for sure but i don't think people realized how knowledgeable he was in american music And he was a certified expert in all forms of American jazz and rhythm and blues. John Lennon wrote and recorded the song John Sinclair to help support John, who had been sentenced to 10 years in jail for possession of two joints. As the song says, they gave him 10 for two. John and Yoko headlined a benefit concert to free John Sinclair at the Chrysler Arena in Ann Arbor, Michigan, with supporting acts Bob Seger and Stevie Wonder. The event lasted 14 hours and drew 15,000 people. 14 hours. That, that took. Yes. Um, and three days later, Sinclair was released from prison after serving less than three years. The song John Sinclair ended up on the John and Yoko Elephant's Memory album sometime in New York City in June of 1972, long after Sinclair was freed from prison. 
And the song was later covered by the band Blind Melon. Hmm. Matt Lee also said he was definitely on the cutting edge of counterculture. When you look at how other towns had their Abby Hoffmans and their Jerry Rubens and those people, he was the Detroit equivalent to them. He was definitely Detroit's resident radical. Sinclair leaves behind a huge body of work in the form of books and recorded poems and essays backed by blues and jazz musicians. His last book, Collected Poems, 1964 to 2024, is currently at the printer, set to be released any time now. And finally, there's the passing of R&B singer and pianist Clarence Frogman Henry, who was part of the 1964 U.S. tour with the Beatles. Uh, born in New Orleans, he was known for having several hits on both sides of the Atlantic, including Ain't Got No Home and But I Do, sounding very much like Fats Domino. He got to be on the Beatles tour because his manager, Bob Astor, also happened to work for Brian Epstein's company, NEMS Enterprises. Henry played 18 dates at $750 a week. After expenses, he said, I wasn't making but $500 a week, but I enjoyed that $500. A lot of experiences <laughs> would have done it for nothing. Henry recalled that of all the Beatles, he was closest to Paul. He said, Paul, he was my main Beatle that was real friendly. He'd asked me about different New Orleans musicians. He and I and one of the guys with the Bill Black combo, we bummed together. We played dice, but Paul was winning all the money. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Clarence Frogman Henry was 87. You hear that, Danny? He was enjoying his money while he was getting it, and he didn't worry about it. So <laughs> That's you know, right. That's spend, it. spend, spend. <laughs> and I should also add, I, I talked about him in a presentation that I did a few years ago at um, the Abbey Road Conference, um, which was at the Eastman School of Music, that mm -hmm. I kind of hypothesize, I don't have 100% proof of this, but I think he may have also helped introduce Paul to Swamp Pop uh, because mm -hmm. uh, um, Clarence uh, was also uh, involved in that scene and uh, may have indirectly or perhaps directly been responsible for O'Darling. So, all right, there you go. Very nice. All right, that's it. That okay, is. we're great. Thank you very much, Ken. And uh, before Kit brings on the screen to, for us to run down uh, the second half of this list, I want to ask you guys can you do this list? Do you want to do this list? <laughs> How long would it take you to do this list? And let's start with Ken. This would be tough as hell to do. Maybe a top 10, <laughs> but a top 100. It's like I said, I mean, how do you weigh your number 75 song with your number 74 song? Is it going to be that big a difference as to what you think is better? Um, I could certainly make a whole list of songs that I feel deserve to be in, in, in the top 100, but placing them all as though one is better than the next is really tough to do. Mm -hmm. um, would I want to do it? We'd spend weeks months going through them here on on the show if we each did this kind of thing but i think something more feasible like a top 10 or a top 20 i wouldn't mind doing and you know what even just na naming your number one song is tough there's so yeah. many great songs yeah yeah I mean, what rob chose as number one i could see a lot of people saying but i could also see so many other choices so you know it would take yeah. me a time to come up with my top 100 i could do it if i had a deadline in a week i'd come up with something but then i'd say well you know i really should change this you know like, right <laughs> really there you go. yeah, yeah. joe been, how about you oh well, sorry ken you've been blessed with a lot of great music so yeah. it's, it's very tough to do i could i could do it <laughs> i mean i could i could come up with a hundred songs that i think would be in my personal a subjective top hundred, but as Ken says, you know, it gets a little silly. Well, which one's seventy three? Which one's seventy four? It's right. hard to get well, them in let's order. Just say, let's just say for you know for giggles. I mean, at least you you can name a hundred songs, but not yeah. put them in any order. I yeah. mean, at least you 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 know you can you know you can you can um, understand you know your own list and what songs do it for you, what songs don't do it for you. I mean, you 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 know yeah. you you have an understanding with the, how much time you've put into listening to this music. Now, you kind of have an idea of what songs have stood out 
the test of time for you as a person and an, and an individual. Well, the top 50, I think, you know, I'm just thinking like I'd be able to dis- to tell the difference, the contrast between like the, the lower 50 and the top 50, you know, is where it really makes the difference. Not so much, you know, which one's 96, which one's right. 95, you know, something like that. But when you get into the top 50 now, the pressure's on a little more. Right. Hmm. Right. Queen? Yeah. And I mean, well, first of all, you know, you hit on this. It's subjective. You know, you right. have to sure. think of that. Also, you know, I thought about this because I, I thought, you know, how do you come up with like the criteria of this? I mean, because that was so going to be many... my next question. Yeah. I mean, but, you know, what criteria do you put in place to 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 rank these songs or even just have them on your list? Yeah, because, OK, you can think of like popularity. You know, are you going to consider that about, you know, right. sales and charts? Are you going to think about, all right, lyrics? Are you going to, to think about that, the the uh, uniqueness of the lyrics? Are you going to consider, you know, uh, the the instrument, you know, the, the skill of the, you know, instrumentation, the arrangement? I mean, it's, mm-hmm. th- there's so many different criteria to talk about here. How do you judge them against each other? And, and then, of course, you know, all four of them, I mean, sure, they had some similarity in sound because, I mean, they are all Beatlesque. I mean, of course, mm-hmm. but they also had some significant differences in, in their sound. I mean, George particularly, um, you know, really had uh, significant dif- differences in his sound. So how are you going to compare that? I mean, I, I just think that's unfair to, you know, compare him and say, is this better than something Paul recorded? I mean, no, it's right. different. You know, so th- it's a this is an impossible task. Well, I mean, the I criteria it thing's interesting because I'm going to be addressing that probably when we get to number one. Because I, you know, sometimes you say you make lists up, and even this even happens with movies. Like when I'm trying to rate movies, I try to do four star ratings, and I'm like, now do I want to rate it how I feel subjectively? Like you see a movie like Attack of the Fifty Foot Woman, I'm just really going off here, and it's like it's a lot of fun. It's like so much fun. It's perfect. It delivers just what you want. But is it a four star movie? No, it's not a four star movie on an objective scale. Right. So that's that's you know. So you kind of have to. I'm not going to give it one, because, right. because it's a it's a cheesy movie. But I, I maybe I'll give it a two and a half or three to make a right. same thing with the songs. You know, uh, is it just whatever you like? It it should really be well, what it you, be your what you list. like. Yeah, it's your list. That's what you, you know, like. like for example, if you know, I'm just thinking of a popular song, like say "My Sweet Lord," you know, which would be high on my list. But if you, if you say, "Well, I don't really like that song at all," really, it might not be on your 100 list, even though in a way it should be, for other reasons. You know, right. what's the criteria? You know, it deserves right, right. to be. That and then there's of... always the ever change. Your you know your mind is always changing. You can spend all this time making a list, and then the next week later you can just oh oh I forgot this song <laughs> and I wanted that on my list. Yeah. <laughs> then yeah. it's also the issue of what songs have had an impact on you. Yes, yes, moved you the most. Yeah. And they may not be the most commercial songs or the right. most popular songs. And how True. do you weigh? You know, should those be ranked higher? It's really. Right. Totally- what songs affected you and what that's you right. right and for what reason so yeah all right queen let's do 50 to 41 okay let me get that on screen Hang on a second okay all right so 50 you got i'm the greatest 49 you got the great run of the mill 48 monkberry moon delight 47, you're looking at Give Me Some Truth. 46, we got Here Comes the Moon, which was a big thing uh, last week. Uh, 45, you got Calico Skies. 44, Love. 43, Awesome, Rory and the Hurricanes. 42, you got Om Harry Om. 41, The Great and Powerful, 1985. Now, Joe Mayo, let's start with you and get your thoughts on this set of 10. All right. Well, my subjective thoughts here, I got to say. uh, Well, I'm being a little objective, too, like we said. uh, I'm the greatest, you know, great Ringo song. I think it deserves to be on this list. 
and I like it enough for it to be on this list. You know, um, you got a great uh, vocal from Ringo, and you've got to him being helped out by uh, other people. John, of course, sing, sings along with him and wrote it and so forth. Yeah, I like the song a lot. Number 50, I'm kind of comfortable with that, I, I guess. Maybe, you know, I could say it should be lower maybe a little bit. I don't know what my 50 would be. I haven't thought about this. I haven't, uh, I haven't compiled my top 50, so I don't know if, if this would have been in or bumped that off a little into the 60s. But I'm glad it's there. All right, let's talk. Let me go a little faster. All right, run of the mill. Uh, I know Tom's a big fan of this. I remember from a show. I mean, I yeah. I do like the song. Don't I don't think I'm as nuts about it as I should be. I think it's something that uh, I've learned to enjoy more and more over the years as I'm listening to the entirety of All Things Must Pass. But I like what he's singing. I like the way he's George is tackling the Beatles breakup and the problems that were within. You know, and of course, you know, I love that opening line. Uh, yeah, I'll see this. <laughs> you know, I have to have a choice of when to or not to raise my voice. You know, that's what, you know, I got to try to remember that. Uh, but anyway, so 40, for me, it wouldn't work this high for me. Monkberry Moon Delight. I love that song. I lo oh, man, I have so much fun with that. What, what, Todd the Force that is in Paul's screaming of vocals and everything you know not since oh darling as i <laughs> have i loved the what he did like that but then again i have this is where i get a little uh, objective i say well i like it but would i really put it like in the top 50 i don't know i don't know about that i think it's a little high but uh i might uh when i compile my list who knows i might just say son of a gun it's in there in the 50s <laughs> i have to see what i put give me some truth i like where that is and 47, um, John, you know, and what, of course, we learned especially from the Get Back film that Paul was working on it with him mm -hmm. and stuff like that. So, um, love that song, you know, John doing his uh, honesty thing and his but had politics, and you know, it's kind of, you know, nasty and sarcastic. Love, I love the track. I'm okay with it at 47. Here Comes the Moon by George. I so love the self-titled George Harrison album. Mm -hmm. uh, just about every song on it. And I do love Here Comes the Moon. And again, the same thing. I don't, I, I don't think it would be in my top 50. And I, but yet at the same time, I look at stuff like this and I'm impressed. These are the kind of things I'm like, well, I like to, even though I might not do it, I like him, uh, somebody to uh, be different enough to put that a high uh, ranking like that at number 46. Uh, 45 is Calico Skies from the excellent album Flaming Pie. I think it's a real winner, one of Paul's all-time best songs. Uh, I love it being 45. Got no problem with that. Uh, 44 is Love. Yeah, I think uh, that song from Plastic Ono Band from John, uh, it's a good spot for it. I like it. I'm comfortable with it at 44. Now, I remember the show's... Before the show began, I said, there's one song, for me actually two, that blow me away that they're on here at all. And this is the first one. Rory and the Hurricanes from Ringo's Postcards from Paradise album of 2015, being number 43. I think I think it's a, a hell of a fun song. I, I, I enjoy it on that album. But man, there's no way I can I would ever put this on this list, or at least not that high, you know, 43. So it it blows me away. But as I just said, with here comes the moon, that's the kind of thing that it, it, it excites you if you're a fan and you like to see something different. The usual suspects you see all the time, usual songs you expect to see in the, the top of, of the list, top 50. But that it sure is interesting. Um now, again, I, I'm on the spot here because I admitted before the show, I didn't recognize the, the song, all, what is it, Om Hare Om? Yep. Uh, uh, it's a bonus All Things Must Pass track. I don't know it. So I, I, I pass. Uh, lastly, for 41, 1985, <laughs> a masterpiece. A masterpiece. I might even have it higher than that in this. It's, you know, I love 1985, one of the greatest things Paul ever did. Um, I, I, 41's good. Um, I might even go higher, depending on what songs I come up with. So I, I, that's my take on the first ten songs. Hmm. All right, Queen. 
Okay. Uh, let's see. Well, um, yeah, there, there are a few that I, I quibble with and some that were pleasant surprises here. Um, I would say, um, I, I would say 47, give me some truth. Uh, I'd probably rank it a little higher. I've always thought this was one of John's finest vocal performances. I yeah. thought that, you know, the snarling on this, um, the lyrics, uh, even though some of them are kind of semi nonsense, it's still, you know, it still works. I've, I've just always found this. I wouldn't say like top 10, um, you know, maybe in the thirties range. I, I've just always, this has been a favorite of mine. Um, so, uh, so I would say that one, you know, loved seeing here comes the moon here. I, I definitely, uh, and I, I think I'm happy with where it is. I, I love that track. I've always thought it was beautiful. Loved hearing it last, uh, last Monday, uh, you know, <laughs> the eclipse. Uh, but it's a, a beautiful song. I've always thought it was underrated. Uh, and so I was delighted, uh, to see it here. So I'm, I'm, that's a, that's a nice surprise. Calico Skies, wonderful to see that. Um, and, and I'm happy with it at, at that rank. Um, yeah, Rory and the Hurricanes, that was a surprise. Mm. I, I have to agree with Joe. I don't think I would have ranked it that high. I'm not sure if I would have even ranked it in the top 100. It's fun, uh, but I think there are other Ringo tracks, uh, and we'll get to that later when we yeah. talk about the songs that were left out that I definitely would have placed <laughs> except over this one. Uh, I mean, it's not it's not bad or anything, but I just think there are stronger ones that that could have been included here. Um, Nineteen hundred and eighty five, way too low. Uh, I, that's as you said, Joe. That's a masterpiece. I love that. Um, you know, it sounds good live and in the studio. Um, I, I mean. <laughs> too low absolutely too low uh so i i would say yeah but, i mean great that it's included but um but i i would put it maybe top 20 um for sure but you know great that great that he put it in there but uh and and i would also agree uh with uh joe's assessment of the george harrison song i'd actually forgotten about that one um you know that was included in the box set um it's interesting, uh, but top 100, I don't know if I would do that, I, if I would rank it that high. Um, but it's an interesting track, uh, but I don't think it belongs in the, the top 100. But uh, mm -hmm. so kind of a mixed bag. There's some, some you know, one so like love, and I mean, that's beautiful. Uh, so some that I have, I think are about right. Uh, some couple of nice surprises and some like, nope. Way too well. Hmm. Hmm. All right. Cool. Ken Michaels. Okay. I have similar comments to what the two of you have said so far, but I'm the greatest. I can certainly see being in the top 100. Mm -hmm. Don't know if I would rank it this high. Um, I love the song because it so much fits Ringo and his character. And, you know terrific line that john wrote i was in the greatest show on earth for what it was worth i love that line in there and the fact that john and george is on there and klaus foreman and billy preston i mean it makes it very special there um yeah definitely should be in the top 100 run of the mill i didn't know tom how much you like that song but it's yeah. one of my favorite solo george yeah. songs and it's over the years it's just gone up in stature um, I especially love the lyrics of the song, which works just as poetry to itself. Whether or not you want to put it in the context of George talking to Paul at the moment or advising someone not to judge someone else, you know, um, it really works. Incredible melody, incredible arrangement. I'm pretty sure that Olivia Harrison, that's one of her favorite George songs, but I'm really glad to see it up here. I would probably put her up even higher. Yeah. Uh, Monkbrae Moon Delight. Thank you, Rob Sheffield, for putting this in here. It really should be higher. And to me, it's such a fun, nonsense song, but it's the most amazing, gutsy vocals that Paul has ever laid down, more so than No Darling. You know, and it's continuous throughout the whole song of over five minutes long. I don't know how he was able to do that with his voice. Um, but still, an amazing tune overall. I probably would rank that one higher. You know, same thing with Run of the Mill. Give Me Some Truth is a no-brainer. 
It's a song that still resonates today lyrically when you're tired of the nonsense that goes on in politics and you just want truth to come from your politicians. I love the biting guitar solo from George Harrison in it. Um, <clears throat> not sure if I would place it any higher or lower. It probably is just right where it is. Here Comes the Moon. I love that song. I kind of I identify with what Joe said. I love the the self-titled George Harrison album. There's other songs on that album that I would place much higher than Here Comes the Moon, like Your Love is Forever, for example, is amazing, and Dark Sweet Lady, and um, Love Comes to Everyone. But um, it's a nice song. It's a good brother or sister song to Here Comes the Sun. And... Yes, I did post it on Facebook for the solar eclipse. <laughs> it's like the perfect oh, song. I wish the moon covered the whole sun where we live, but that's another story. Um, Calico Skies, gem from Paul, deserves to be in here, maybe even higher. It's one of those great acoustic tunes of the caliber of Blackbird, really, should be way up there uh, in, in this countdown. Love is a gem from John. It's always tough for me to to, to rank between love and oh my love. They're both equal. Right. Yeah. Rory and the Hurricanes, I probably wouldn't put it in the top 100. I think it's mainly there because of the historical, you know, value of the song and the band that Ringo was in before the Beatles. Um, it's, it's an enjoyable song, but there's so many other better ones that Ringo's done. Om Hare Om. Well, Rob Sheffield must really love the spiritual side of George Harrison and yeah. material yeah. from All Things Must Pass, and that's fine. It's a very chant-like song. If you like that kind of stuff, that works for you. I liked it a lot. It's a great bonus track on All Things Must Pass. Glad to have it there. I just don't think I would place it in the, in the top 100. And 1985 is... Along with Only Love Remains, my top two McCartney songs in his solo career. And I would wow. definitely that's that's a you know a masterpiece without a doubt. It'd probably be in my top ten. You know, if it was just Paul, it would be in the top two. But when you're combining right. all the other Beatles, you got it, it would be somewhere in the top ten. Nineteen hundred eighty five. I'm so glad that he chose to do that live. It was one right. that I felt he should have always done live. Yep. And um took too long for him to do it but at least he's done it but yeah. a great right. song. i love the whole piano part that he came up with which is just so it's one of the great piano songs <laughs> in paul's True. career all time yep. no doubt about it in i fact, agree everything about that song is just perfect so i'm glad that it's in there definitely good choices cool. a few odd ones in in those 10 songs yeah I, yeah, I mean, I like what you, what all three of you have said about this block of of tracks. I'll just say like this is like songs that I'm sh I'm almost 100 percent sure would be on my list would be uh, definitely Run of the Mill, definitely 1985, definitely Love, um, <clears throat> and maybe I'm the greatest. Songs that I could see maybe uh, picking in this block would be uh, would be uh, Give Me Some Truth, Monk Buried Moon Delights. Uh, I love Calico Skies. That Calico Skies is in there. Uh, you know, this is what what I do like about you know people doing their lists and seeing you know how deep you know how deep their knowledge is in in, in this catalog, and and seeing a song like Rory and the Hurricanes in here, which is the only Ringo bio bio song uh, mm -hmm. to make you know lists. So he must think very highly of this song, and and so do I. I think it's a good one, but you know, like you, it probably wouldn't be in mine. Uh, my list either the Om Hari Om, um, beautiful acoustic guitar playing in that track. Uh, you, obviously, you guys can go to YouTube if you don't want to, you know, bring out your <laughs> the All Things Must Pass box set and listen to it there. But um, good stuff. I think this is not a bad uh, little block there. Some surprises, yeah, with uh, with Om Hari Om and Rory and the Hurricanes. But all in all, it's not a not it's not a bad block. Oh. All right, Queen. Okay, what we <clears throat> get this forty two thirty one. Okay. All right, number forty. We got a surprise with Deep Blue. Thirty nine. We're looking at number nine. Dream. Thirty eight. Hi, hi, hi. Thirty seven. You are sixteen. Thirty six. The single that never was. Don't let me wait too long. 35, New York City. 34, Another Day. 33, The Beautiful, Beautiful Boy. 
Uh, we've got uh, 32. Wawa. Now, it's important to uh, say that this was the live version from uh, the Bangladesh concerts. And 31, uh, another surprising entry, uh, Dominoes from Egypt Station. So, this time we will start with uh, the Queen. Okay. This was a very interesting block. Um didn't agree with uh, some of it. Uh, some of it, as you said, some interesting surprises here. Deep Blue, I've always liked. Uh, this is a, a great, uh, great song. Of course, uh, very uh, sad song uh, about uh, about his mother, uh, mother's death. Um, but uh, but really, uh, really nice, uh, nice one. So that that was a surprise, uh, but a, but a very pleasant one. Um, Number nine, dream that dream. That's kind of a no brainer. Um, you know, well, that's a favorite of, of so many of us. Um, and um, I guess I'm okay with it at, at that uh, position. You probably could put it a little higher. Yeah. Uh, you know, I, I'm a little torn the, of, of having it there. You probably could put it in top 20. High, high, high. You know, really ranking that above 1985. I mean, no. <laughs> just no i mean it's a, it's a fun song i mean don't get me wrong it's a it's a fun fun song but to rank that above 1985 i'm i'm sorry i completely disagree with that <laughs> but uh but again it's it's a it's a fun tune but um but yeah that's that's kind of uh that's one of the areas that i i disagree with there um Year 16, I don't know if I'd rank it that high. Um, you know, that's that's a song that I'm sorry it has not aged well. Uh, he does not perform it anymore live, which I think is a very wise decision. It's catchy. I mean, his version is good. It, it, it is. It's just not one of, it's not a Ringo song that I go back to very much. Um, I, I You have to have it here. I get that. It was a big hit for him. Um don't know if I would have put it in the top 50 personally, but, um, you know. But see, then we're getting into criteria there, exactly. you know, when you, you, when know, you, you say probably, that. Yeah, because you know. that's the thing. If you're if you're going to base it on sales uh, and all, then I guess you have to have it here. But, um, yeah, I, I probably wouldn't have because it's just also, you know, political correctness and all aside. It's just never been one of my favorites anyway uh don't make me wait too long um to be honest it's never been i, I I've, I've never been that huge of a fan of of that there are other george songs uh, I look at the time um... <laughs> <laughs> there are other songs which again we will get to later that i would have put here but you know but it's good it's a it's a good one uh but you know, not one of my all-time favorites. Uh, New York City, uh, you know, great, great song. Um, and I think, you know, the the album and this song have really, I, I think, you know, have gone through a reappraisal. And uh, and this is uh, not all of the songs on that album, of course, but uh, but it's a good rocker. And I have a feeling Joe's going to have something to say about uh, about this <laughs> later. I think he'll, I think he, he may they approve um and uh you know it's it's interesting that it's this high another day of course great song that's you know i don't have a an issue with that along with beautiful boy in fact maybe beautiful boy would have ranked a little higher uh wawa interesting that he picked this version and and not the uh album version but the live version is you know really a uh, lot of energy and, and rocking and and uh so i can see why he would do that dominoes that is a fascinating choice and and to rank it that high uh 31 mm -hmm. that was a good track off of egypt station which will always mean a lot to us because that was the first show we ever did on this <laughs> the talk word talk was about uh egypt station that was of course pre-joe um yeah. but uh <clears throat> but yeah. that was that was pre-joe but that was the very first show we ever did uh but anyway um i i don't think i would have ranked it that high uh, at 31 that's awfully high but um you know but interesting choice uh so this block was a little shakier for me like some songs ranked a little too high some too low 
But okay. a couple of interesting choices here, though. A couple of interesting surprises. Okay, fair enough. Uh, Ken? Uh, let's see. Deep Blue, I'm glad is in there. I don't know if I'd rank it as high as 40. But, you know, George only gave us a few of those non-LP B-sides, but we right. kind of measure all of them. <laughs> Especially Miss Odell, I love a lot. Um, but a lot of people love Deep Blue, and it's a great acoustic number, although, like Kit said, sad because George's mother was dying at the time from cancer. When you put it in that context, it... Um, makes it even sadder a song but i'm glad it's in there number nine dream is a song that has really gained in stature through the years i'm happy to see that um and i think i might place it higher than than 39 hi 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 great rocker without a doubt it would be somewhere in my top 100 it's funny though because i wouldn't doubt putting hi 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 in there but like you said kit that ranks higher than 1985 doesn't make sense to me but it's a great solid rocker it's great to do live the whole arrangement of the song it's so powerful as a rocker everything about it as a recording is just so right and so perfect um you're 16 i disagree with you kit i, I think know i know you would it's a, great arrangement. <laughs> it's a great arrangement of the song plus the mouth sack solo from paul in there it's, it's fun just, it's fun Hopkins on the piano it's a very lively spirited version of year 16 and i think it works with ringo's vocals there um not just because it was a number one hit i just think it's a great recording of the song um again it, i probably would keep it where it is 37 but there's a lot of really deep tracks from ringo that i think deserve to be higher up on this list um don't let me wait too long. I could have sworn when we talked about living in the material world, Kit, that you really liked that song. And yeah, I thought, just, yeah, it really should have been a single. It's, it is very Phil Spector ish. Yeah. Kind of like just, a Ronettes type song. Yeah. I just think there are others that I would have rather had in this position, like that high up. Okay. <laughs> I could see it in the top 100. But again, it, there's other George songs that are not on the list that I would place higher and think more highly of than, than that one. But I do love Don't Let Me Wait Too Long. New York City would definitely be somewhere here in the top 50, maybe even even uh, higher. It's just one of John's great rockers, very Chuck Berry-ish. Um, another Day is another perfect song from Paul as a single. Great first single from his solo yeah. career. Um, everything about that song, the vocals, the arrangement, the guitar playing, his bass line in it, it's just so, so good. You know, another day would be somewhere on the list. It, this is probably a good place to put it, 34. I'm glad to see Beautiful Boy, Darling Boy is in there. That's that's a beautiful song for Sean right there. Um, wouldn't touch a thing about it. It's just great. It's very touching to know that he wrote that for, for Sean, just like John wrote Goodnight for Julian when he was five. Wawa, interesting that it's the live recording. And I could see why it really is. It was a, a, such a good song a first song for George to kick off the concert for Bangladesh with very electric, that version. But then I do love the studio version too. Would have had no problem if he put the studio version in there. Domino's is a big surprise for me. And I love Domino's. I would probably put it in the, the top 100, maybe not this high, you know, even when Paul or Ringo now put out something that you think is among their best, it's still hard to have it challenge songs that are classics in your mind that you've loved for decades no matter how good the new songs are so it's it's tough for me to think of domino as that highly with all the other great stuff that that paul has done there's a there's a paul song that's higher than this that i'm very glad that's from the 2000s mm -hmm. uh, so but you know how do you compare a song that you you're loving now or in the last 10 years with a song that you've loved for 50 years. Mm -hmm. You know, it's very right. difficult to do that. Um, yeah, so that's that's my thoughts on those those 10 songs. Okay. Um, I'm going to go next. Um, what, what I would definitely have on my list from here would would definitely be Wawa, but probably the studio version. Another Day would be on my list. Don't Let Me Wait Too Long would be there. Number Nine Dream would I probably would put in my top 10, you know, at least top 15. Um, that's that song over the last, you know, 10, 15 years is just really, 
impacted my life a lot. Um, surprises, you know, Deep Blue, for sure. Uh, really surprised seeing that. Um, New York City, I'm, 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 you know, almost excited to see that. I love that rocker from from John. If you want to see how much Paul McCartney loves the song "Beautiful Boy," go on YouTube and and type in Des- Paul McCartney "Desert Island Discs," and you will see. Very moving. Um, like you got, you know, like you guys, uh, like you can Dominoes. I love that track. Um, happy to see it here. Don't know if I would put it in mine, but I was really excited to see that here. Um, you're 16. Yeah. I mean, for me these days, I can take it or leave it really. You know, it's it just not, doesn't excite me that much anymore. Um, but that's just, that's just my taste right now. I don't skip it or anything if I, if I'm playing it or playing that album, but uh uh, you know, whatever, such is life. But um, Joe, how about uh, how about you? All right, <clears throat> excuse me. All right, Deep Blue. Uh, I've always loved that song, even though it's very sad. I thought it was a great B side. Um, I think it's kind of high here. Uh, you know, it's a, you know, sad song. I like it though, but it's kind to me. It's a little on the high of the list. I don't. I don't. I get. I don't know if it would make my list or not. Even I, I'd, I'd have to see as I'm going down all the songs. Uh, number nine, Dream, classic from John, definitely deserves to be in the top 50. Uh, I like it at number 39, but it might be even higher for me if I thought about it. I uh, always loved High, High, High. I think that's a great Paul rocker. Um, I agree. I think it, Kit said uh, it's mm-hmm. hard to believe that it's uh, um, uh, higher than uh, 1985 um, because I really think that 1985 is better, but I'm glad it has a showing and respectable showing. You're 16. I, I love Ringo's version of it much better than the original. Uh, I think it suits Ringo. It's Ringo all over. It's like he does what he does best. I have no problem with it. Um, but then again, I, I, I don't know if it would if it would make my list that high. I think maybe, you know, the influence of it being a hit, you know, such a, a number one hit maybe had something to do with it here. Or maybe Rob just liked it that much. Um, I've always been in the camp that thinks that Don't Let Me Wait Too Long was the single that ne- should have been and never was. It would have been a good single. I agree with that. It's one of the songs I like best off uh, Living in the Material World. Um, I don't think it would be that high on my list. Um, I've always gone on record here as me loving New York City, John rocking out. Um, it's funny though, you might be surprised to hear me say, I, I thought maybe it's a little high too. Definitely would be on my list. I don't know exactly where, <laughs> but it would be up there. I mean, it may be in the 50 somewhere. Another day, an early uh, classic from Paul in the solo career. It, it, it's, I'm very comfortable with it being at number 34. Beautiful boy, beautiful song <laughs> uh, about, you know, for Sean, uh, a tearjerker now, especially in light of what happened to John, uh, like like we saw Paul being very moved by that, and uh, I love that it's on here. And I, you know, I'm, I'm okay with it. Thirty three, maybe a little higher, but I'm okay with it. Wawa, I have a problem with it being the live version. I'm I'm not one for the live version over the studio most of the time. Uh, it's okay. I like the live version, sure, sure, but um, I think I prefer. Uh, you know, the studio version of the record more. That's the only problem I have with that. Uh, Dominoes, it's uh, one of the best songs, I think, off Egypt Station, but I don't think it would be in my top 100 unless I started making my list and I say, yeah, I'm not coming up short. I'm thinking, you know, Dominoes is in the 100. I didn't, I didn't think it would be, but where I'm at now, it, it's it, 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 off to Egypt Station and then we have 80 songs. <laughs> So, uh, yeah. Okay. Excellent, Joe. Thank you. And uh, Queen, we're off to the next block, which will be 30 to 21. Moving right along. Um, a surprise here. Uh, we've got tra- uh, Handle of Care at number 30. 29, we've got Mother. 28, Live and Let Die. 27, Blown Away. Or, I'm sorry, not Blown Away. Blow Away. <laughs> uh, 26, uh, so kind of a surprise here. Give Peace a Chance. 
25, we got early 1970. 24, the beautiful Jenny Wren. 23, the really good rocker, What Is Life. 22, very equally powerful working class hero. And 21, such a beautiful, beautiful song that I've really loved that I've come to appreciate, Be Here Now. And for this block, let's see here. Ken Michaels, we'll start with you. Okay. I'm very happy that Handle with Care is in there. Mm. Um, and I think some people might question why put the Traveling Wilburys in. Well, it was an important part of George's career. Yes. His solo career, just like Wings was, although there's a big difference between the two. Um, you know, Traveling Wilburys was a band of equals. But um, Handle with Care is such a great, you couldn't have picked a better first song to hear from a band than Handle mm. with Care. It really introduced the band to everybody. Not only is it a great song, but everybody takes a turn with a lead vocal. You get to hear everybody on it. It's so damn catchy and it's become a classic. And I think that it, it deserves to be. So I'm happy to see it somewhere in here. And actually, I have no problem with it uh, rating this highly. You know, problem is, you know, so many of the Traveling Wilbury songs are so much fun to listen to. And there's probably some others you would probably like to put in the top 100 between the two albums. But uh, without a doubt, if I had to pick one, you have to put Handle with Care because that's their most well-known song. As well as End of the Line. But Handle with Care, I think, is even more well-known. Mother is a classic song. There's no doubt about it. The emotion, John's incredible vocals on there, the screaming that he does, it's so cathartic. It's so incredible. Um, as a composition, it has more to do with the emotion of the song and what he's saying in very few words that makes it very powerful. It's a less is more song. Very simple song in terms of chords, just a few uh, verses in there. But um, yeah, I could see it deserving to be in in the top 50 and maybe it's just that i like so many other songs more in john's solo catalog that's the problem yeah like i said this is a very rich catalog to go through and um i'm happy that it's there i just don't know if i would place it as high as 29 the and let die is an absolute classic i love everything about the song they have a case of it not only being a great composition but george martin's production behind it the orchestration Everything that has made that song become a classic is a reason why Paul has done it in every tour. <laughs> and it's a great song to do live and uh, with all the explosions and all. Um, yeah, definitely it had to be in the top 50. And for some people, it could rank even higher than 28. Blow Away, I'm very happy, is, is in the list. It's a great, very simple song, but very effective love the chorus in there you know it's just it's everything on the george harrison album has that vibe of being on an island it's very breezy and relaxing and i get that every time i listen to blow away um it's a very well crafted song um give peace a chance is more of an important song than a great composition to me because it was the first solo beatle single it was where john's head was at at the time doing the, you know, the uh, bed ins for peace with Yoko. So I think I could see the importance of the song and ranking it somewhere in the top 100. I don't know if as a composition, I would place it this high, but um, it's an important part of his history. There's no doubt about it. And no John Lennon collection would be complete without it, without a doubt. Early 1970 is a fun song it's a great b-side a lot of people love it because it's referring to the other three beatles it's so much in ringo's character it really works for ringo it would definitely be in my top 100 it may not rank as highly as 25. the song i was referring to before when i said a newer song of paul's that deserves to be ranked very high jenny wren mm. that song is a gem there's no doubt about it, you know. Ugh. It deserves to be looked upon as being a masterpiece in Paul's solo catalog. 
Um, if you love the acoustic Paul, and so many of us love it from Blackbird to Junk and Teddy Boy and Calico Skies and, you know, all the acoustic driven songs that he's done, Jenny Wren, lyrically and all, is so full and complete and as perfect a song as you can get from Paul. It deserves to be recognized as one of the greatest songs in his solo catalog. Very happy that Rob put it here at 24. Mm. Um, where was my other, the rest of this list? 23, 23, what is life? What is life is a classic. Great song from All Things Was Pass. Big hit. Everything about it. The opening guitar lick. The brass around it. A lot of people love the stripped down version, which is really cool when you've had so many years of, of hearing it with with the brass and all. Um, yeah, that definitely deserves to be way up there on the list. What was 22? Working Class Hero. That deserves to be way up there. Powerful song. It's another one of those songs, kind of like Mother, where what he's saying in the song is so strong, you know, sort of autobiographical with him and it's just him and an acoustic guitar which m brings out the song even more makes it even more powerful in the message um another great acoustic song there uh okay yeah and 21 was be here now your eyes were back in your head <laughs> god bless you rob sheffield for putting that there. i mean that's um that's a song <clears throat> like i think i've said it's it's the within you without you of george's solo catalog in the mm. sense that he sang a lot in the song only would be here now with fewer words right very much like a mantra it's very slow you know what i love about it is that you know you can have a measure of a song or a couple of measures where all he's saying is one word and he's dragging it out and it's bringing home the message even more it's a very pretty song stripped down again just like you know, just like Jenny Wren is just a simple, very uh, acoustic and working class hero. You love the acoustic nature of it. This wouldn't work with a full band and an electric version. It's very sedate, very calm, mm -hmm. something you can meditate to. It's absolutely gorgeous. And I'm glad that it's at 21. I'm glad that it has that higher ranking. Cool. Excellent. Thank you, Ken. Uh, I'll go next, and I'll say for sure on my list here, you know, I, I've been such a big fan of Be Here Now here lately, um, Working Class Hero, I would throw definitely throw on there a great chance that Jenny Wren uh, would make my list. Um, early 1970 might because of what we talked about last time, Ken, with the, the connection, mm -hmm. right, with the with the other three um beetles in there um live and let die of course probably blow away uh what i probably wouldn't have is you know give peace a chance probably wouldn't make my list mother another great this is a really good block of tracks mm -hmm. you know we're getting into you know some very powerful powerful stuff here that we've all spent a lot of time with and um but yeah give peace a chance is i think really the only track here that I that I might not consider being in on this list. So you know, good good on uh, Mr. Sheffield for for this uh, for this bunch of tracks. Uh, Queen, go with you next. Yeah, I mean, this is this is overall a pretty <laughs> pretty solid block. I mean, I was thrilled uh, to see "Blow Away" twenty seven. I mean, that's one of my all time favorite George tracks. I I would have to disagree with "Give Peace a Chance." I think it does deserve to be. Uh, hmm this high because yes it's not like a great piece of songwriting although it's i mean it's meant to be a slogan kind of song and that's mm. you know that's what it is i mean it's it's meant to be it's kind of repetitive and all but that's that's what it was supposed to be it's culturally important right. um you know i mean it it really is i mean that people still sing it at protests today um you know it's a it's a very important song uh, it was not only important to John personally uh, in his career, as you said, first solo single, the whole thing, but 
it still stands the test of time today. It's still quoted today. So I, I would argue, yeah, I, I think it needs to be ranked that high, uh, even just for standing the test of time like it has and that it's still relevant. Um, so I, I, I would, I'm okay with it uh, personally at, at that rank that high. Uh, early 1970, I, I think that could be ranked lower. It's a fun song. I can see why it's on the list. But again, as we will talk yeah. about in a minute, I would choose other Ringo songs, yeah. I think, over, over this one that I, I would have put on the list. Um, what is life? I love it. Uh, don't think I would uh, rank Be Here Now over that song, though. That 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 I have a little little trouble with. I think What is Life is... I, I think is so powerful and, and such a wonderful big song. I don't know. I, I don't think I, I would definitely reverse, <laughs> reverse those rankings. Um, just, just personally, um, working class hero, of course, needs to be this high, um, maybe even top 10. That's a, that is such a powerful song. Um, so, uh, so overall though, uh, and mother, um, I don't know. I'm, I'm sort of torn about it being this high. On the one hand, yeah, it's not a song I go back to over and over again. I mean, you have to kind of be in the right frame of mind to listen to it. On the other hand, that is such a significant song in John's life and, and in his career that you have to have it on, on the, at least in the top 50. Um, and it's such a powerful, powerful song. Um, and, uh, and he's, and as you said, Ken, his vocals on it are just, mm. I mean, just, you know, just get right to the heart, um, <laughs> that you have to have it on there. Um, but maybe not, maybe not quite this high, but close. Uh, so overall, this is, I think this is a solid block of songs with just some, maybe some minor tweaks I would make, but overall very good. Okay. Joey. Yeah. All right. Well, I love the traveling Wilburys, but I don't think I would put Handle with Care this high uh, or any Wilbury song. Uh, you know, just to give him a mention, I guess, to say, oh, we got to have a Wilburys track in there, kind of, you know, kind of up there. You know, if there was going to be one, I think Ken kind of said this, I could see it being Handle with Care or End of the Line. Mm. Even though for fatigue factor these days, I reach for the second album, believe it or not. Mm. <laughs> I rather hear uh, Inside Out or I rather hear the Wilbury Twist or something like that, or She's yeah. My Baby these days. But anyway, all right. So uh, it, I, I don't know if it'd be on my list, but if it was, it would be much uh, a low, a lower, put it that way. Mother, you know, I love John and I love his pain and angst and how he delivers it and all his honesty in that song. Um, we've said many times, uh, I think pretty much most of us, if not all of us, have said, you can't listen to that album every day, Plastic Ono Band. I think Mother deserves to be on the, the 100 and probably be on my 100, but not this high. You know, I don't even know if it'll be in the 50 for me, but I, you know, I'd probably be on my list somewhere. Live and Let Die is a classic. Classic Paul, you can't, you know, sometimes there's not much else to say. It's a classic. It's great. I love it. It deserves to be on it. It's in a good spot, I think, 28. Definitely top 50. I love Blow Away. I remember loving that song in 1979. I always say I wish it had been more of a, a, a higher hit. I mm -hmm. wish it had done better. It deserved it. Um, but again, I think it's a little high here at 27. Now, uh, I give peace a chance. Surprise to a lot of people maybe out there. Uh, I do not like "Give Peace a Chance." Never did as as a as a song. I, I think it's a great slogan. I think it's you know that, that's what it is. Its power is it's a slogan. But I don't. It, it's just uh, I don't know how many minutes it is, but whatever it's three, four minutes, five minutes, whatever it is, it's just monotony over and over again. And I I, ha I have no need for it to listen to it as a single. That said, I do. Like and I just said I didn't like live versions better. Believe it or not, I like the live piece in Toronto version better. Something about it is more fun, or something. And he's, he's trying to come up with these names. He's like trying to come up with what names to say. Uh, any old thing that he can come up with, I kind of like that. So anyway, I don't know if it even be on the hundred on my list, but I might be giving it lip service because of the slogan. I might say it kind of deserves a place. And the other one that confuses me here is uh, is early 1970. 
it's a, you know, it's a fun B side. You got the other Beatles mentioned. It's about the the end of you know the end of the Beatles and wanting to see them again and what he was going through, Ringo and all that. It's an important song in that way. I think it's more important. I admire it more than actually love it. You know, I don't I don't think it's a great song, but I like that he's talking about his experiences and with his friends and everything. So um, I it, I don't know if it'd be on my hundred at all. And if it was, it would be much lower. Uh, I agree what Ken said about Jenny Wren. I think it's a, it's a modern classic. It's one of Paul's greatest songs ever, I'll go as far to say. Um, I think it's a modern-day Blackbird kind of thing. Uh, modern day, now we're talking 2005, 20 years <laughs> or whatever it is. But, you know, in the later part of Paul's career, mm. I think people are missing out. There's some songs that I always say, you know, these people that say that Paul didn't do anything good after Name Your Album. You know, whether it's, you know, uh, Tug of War, whether it's uh, Flaming Pie, whatever, Band on the Run <laughs> even, whatever it is, you're missing out stuff like Je Jenny Wren. Um, would it be 24? I like that it's here. I like that it's 24. Don't know where I'd put it, but uh, What Is Life? There it is again. Classic George Harrison, classic Beatles song. It deserves where it is. Deserves to be very high on the list, if not higher. Uh, working Class Hero. Yeah, I really love the song. That's John again, you know, bearing his soul, his honesty, his pain, all that. I, I really respect it. I like that it's on here and kind of high. You know, whatever we're going to quibble about, whether I put it at 22 or 32 or, you know, 40, I, I don't know. Be Here Now, I've always liked. I mean, that's a song. I could see not everybody gravitating to it right away. I think some people have to really try to give time to living in the material world, you know, uh, you really have to just lie down. I mean, that's what I used to do when I was younger, just drink it all in, you know, mellow out, listen to it, relax, get the vibe of the song and the feeling of it, uh, and be here now, be in the now, and really drink it in. It's a very powerful song. I, the only thing is, now the negative, I, I, I think it's too high, but that's just me. It'd probably be in my list. I just don't know about being 21. Um, yeah. And uh, I guess that's at the end of the line here. <laughs> Back to the ah, very good. See what I did there? Yeah. <laughs> Trying to go fast, but also making all the points, you know, best I can. Thank you, Joe. One. What's that, Ken? You have a good one every now and then. <laughs> a good one every now and then. <laughs> now and all then. right, you get a couple of go. good ideas all year round. Gotta make okay. a federal case out of it. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Now, top 20. Now, now we're really getting into meat potatoes. Being serious. Songs here. Yeah, yeah, this is no joke here. So, okay, 20, we're going Oh My Love. 19, Here Today. 18, Apple Scruffs. 17, Jealous Guy. 16, Let Me Roll It. 15, Photograph. 14, Instant Karma. 13, My Sweet Lord. 12, Jet. And 11, O Yoko. So, another 10 right there. And wow, uh, I'll start th this round, but um, oh boy, uh, right off the bat, uh, all my love here today. Um, Two just beautiful, beautiful songs that um, would probably make my top 100. We are going to a song next that, um, that wouldn't make my top 100, and that's Apple Scruffs. I don't even know if it would make my top 100 of George Harrison uh, songs. Wow. Uh, so that just gives you an idea of what I think of that song. Why is that? Why is I, it? I, I don't I, – yeah. How much do you have to explain? <laughs> you don't care for me. Yeah, that's what we're that's we're analyzing I, this. Yeah, I know. I mean, you know what? I yeah. Again, I just don't like the. I just don't like. It's just so. Again, we we talk about these tracks and how repetitive repetitive a lot of them are. This one, I don't like the the arrangement at all. I don't like the harmonica in this one at all. I don't like. Uh, it doesn't work for me in this in this track. Uh, I like the fact, okay, Apple Scruffs, yes, okay, we all know what the Apple Scruffs means, but I, I just don't think it's a worthy tribute of 
uh, you know, I won't say lyrically, but I'll just say musically. I think the musically it's just not up the scruff with the rest of ah, uh, with the, the rest of all... up the scruff. Did you say? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Um, with the rest of the album, I think it's the one. It's that that and I. Um, I dig love. I think are the two weakest. Yeah, tracks I dig love. Yeah, that's weak. Is, are the two weakest tracks in in probably George's uh, canon? But again, that's that's my that's me, <laughs> um, in my list. But uh, where are we at here? Um, Jealous guy. Jealous guy is I think is one of George, uh, one of John sorry one of John's most beautiful songs I think it's one of the most beautiful songs of all of all four I uh, have ever have ever done um I instantly fell in love with that one I, and I think it was because of the, the the Imagine John Lennon uh movie and and soundtrack let me roll it it's, <laughs> it's unfortunately answer, right? it's unfortunately <laughs> the fatigue factor in yeah. this one that it wouldn't probably wouldn't make my top 100 uh photograph yeah i mean this is it was a very important song for ringo um a great collaboration um here with with um ringo and george great great track instant karma great great track it belongs on this list absolutely my sweet lord how it's not in the top 10 of his list kind of surprised but who knows you know maybe somebody wouldn't have it maybe not everybody would have it in their top 10 you never know but uh, but I think it's a top ten song, um, in my opinion. Uh, Jet again, I could say I'm really tired of this song, but this is one of those tracks that you hear so much that you can still listen to and not get tired of. Um, I, I adore Jet, whether he wants to say it's a pony or a dog, you know, whatever. Um, and and Oyoko is so fun. I I do really dig Oyoko. Um, that's uh, off the Imagine album, and um, I think it's worthy of being in a in here. I don't know if I would put it in my top 100, but I love that he put it in his uh, top 20. Um, so that's for me, uh, Joe. Let's go with you next. All right. Uh, oh my love, gorgeous song. I, I absolutely adore it, and George helps on it and plays on it. Um, I love that it's number 20. You know. Um, I'm happy with that. Here today, ditto, a beautiful song to John. Glad that it's here. Glad it's so high. I feel somewhat the same as Tom about Apple Scruffs, though I like it better than you do. That's for sure. I can tell by the way you were saying I like it better than you do, both the music, musically and the lyrically. I think I, I think it, it's the idea of what it's about that really appears to appeals to me, that he's, he's singing one for the for the fans and making an ode to the fans. Right. And waited outside the offices and stuff, but it's way too high. If, if I don't, I don't know if it would make my hundred. If it did, it'd be like one hundred or ninety nine or something. It, it probably wouldn't be no, nowhere near here. Jealous Sky is a song I've always loved. Uh, it deserves to be on here. Um, I, unfortunately, I think I have a little fatigue factor going in with that one myself personally. It's one of those songs that for whatever reason, it's like um, I put it. You know, some songs you, you would say, well. Maybe it feels more like a number 60 song to me now, but gee, it deserves to be higher. You know, mm -hmm. <laughs> you have that, that you know, conflict. But, uh, you know, hey, I'm glad it's here. Let me roll it, fatigue factor all the way. That was always, always, for the longest time, one of my all-time favorite Paul songs. And I just, I'm, I'm fatigued on it. But I would definitely, definitely put it on my list all the same because I do love it that much still, but it wouldn't be 16 for me at this point. Photograph, one of the best solo Beatles songs of all by any Beatle. This one being Ringo. I bought the 45 when it was brand new, and I love the song. I have great memories and nostalgia for it, the whole shebang. Remember those days. I can't tell whether it's you know, just about right where it is or should be more in the top 10 for me, you know, but it's quibbling. Instant Karma, I I love Instant Karma. Um, Instant Karma and Mind Games these days are my two favorite John solo songs, probably. Oh. Uh, and Instant Karma, to me, criminally <laughs> criminally low uh, at fourteen should be a lot higher than that. It'd be, you know, top ten, top six, seven, five, six, seven, something for me, something like that. My sweet Lord, love it. I also got that single as a, as a boy. 
uh, memories, etc. All that. I love the song. Uh, anytime it's on the radio, there's a song that I don't. Anytime I'm fortunate enough to catch the beginning of it, I love it. I don't know why some songs you're like, oh no, this one again, and other ones it's like, keep it going. I love it. It yeah. deserves to be very high on the list. Jet Ditto, like you said, I, we always said this. I could, I can't hear Jet enough. Same thing. Anytime I'm fortunate to catch it on Ken's show or <laughs> or any kind of show, you know, or on the just on the radio, that's a track that comes up here and there. I uh, love it. Never tire of it. A classic. Uh, oh, Yoko, as much as I love John, as much as I defend Yoko, I love the song. It's a fun song. I love the harmonic. I, I love, you know, it's, a, it's just a good, happy feeling uh, song. But I think 11 is way too high for Oh, Yoko. I mean, for me, it would be on my list for sure, but it wouldn't be, it wouldn't be anywhere near here, I don't think. And that's it. Okay. Ken Michaels. What say you? <laughs> I would echo many of the words of what Joe just said, but oh, uh, boy. starting That's with good. Uh, <laughs> "Oh My Love" is one of my favorite John Lennon ballads in his solo career. You know, I say it many times, but John and Paul have that reputation of John being the rocker, and Paul writes the ballads. John could write great ballads just like Paul. Paul could write great rockers just like John. And "Oh My Love" to me is is top tier love song. From John. Very happy to see it rate this highly. Here today at number 19, I like it. I love it a lot. I love the sentiment in the song. I wouldn't rate it as high. And I think that's sacrilege for some people here because it's such an important song for Paul to do live. And I love the studio version on Tug of War. I love the same kind of yesterday arrangement with the string quartet. And uh, the words are beautiful. I love how he approached this uh, the song, um, and I'm glad that he does it live. Like I said, it's very important to him. It's just to so many other songs in Paul's catalog that I would rate higher. Apple Scruffs, I don't agree with, with Tom or Joe here, because I, <laughs> I love every song on All Things Must Pass. I think it's as, as perfect an album, although I always question why you need version two of Isn't It a Pity. But I like all the songs on on uh, All Things Was Best. I like songs that are a full band, and then you've got something more stripped down like Apple Scruffs, acoustic guitar, harmonica, all of uh, the vocals there are George, all the harmony vocals are George. And I love the fact that he did this for the fans. Um, even if it wasn't about the fans, if it was a different set of lyrics, but the same melody, the same arrangement, I'd still love the song. It's a great melody. Everything about it I loved. Um, I just wouldn't place it as high as 18. I don't even know if I would put it in the top 100 because there's so many other great George songs. Mm -hmm. um, but I do love Apple Scruffs. Jealous Guy definitely is one of the greatest of John's uh, love songs. Another one like Oh My Love. I don't know why, Joe, you feel a fatigue factor. I hardly ever hear it. <laughs> Jealous Guy. But at least there's you know a, a lot of artists who have covered the song, which uh, yeah. I'm very happy about. Um, it's a great melody. I love how he took Child of Nature and changed the lyrics of that to Jealous Guy. He didn't waste that song from the past. And uh, everything about it, you know, the whistling in the song, the whole arrangement of it, it's it's beautiful. Definitely a top 20 song. Let me roll it. Here's a case where I really want to try to not let the fatigue factor get in the way. But he's done it to death in concert. It's almost like he has to do it. He feels like it's a really cool song. I love the way it is on Ben on the Run. I love that guitar riff. It's really cool. Just the very simple bass on that song is, is what the song needs. As a studio recording, it's a great track. It's a cool track. I probably, even without the fatigue factor, I would put it somewhere in the, the top 100, but certainly not as high as 16. Photograph to me is a top 10 song. You know, everything about it is wonderful. It's a great song, great production. Love the orchestration on it. Love everything about it. It's as it's so ideal. You, you couldn't find a more perfect song for Ringo to record that was a hit for him. And, uh, you know, certainly helped to have George and Ringo write the song together. Instant Karma is another song that, to me, deserves top 10 status. There are certain songs, like you said, Joe, like Jet, you can listen to all the time and never tire of. 
I never get tired of Instant Carnage. Yeah, that's another one I never get tired of. Yeah, never, ever, and I never get tired of My Sweet Lord. And My Sweet Lord is a song where, again, I always say the song's more important than production, but the, if the production is really exceptional, the way that song starts with the acoustic guitar and the ambiance of the song makes it even more special. Never get tired of My Sweet Lord, despite the fact that I still hear it a lot. Jet, I never get tired of. Um, again, you know, there's, there's still other songs I would rate higher than Jet that I think deserve to go higher than Jet, but it is a classic rocker. And Oh Yoko is a song that I would place in the top 100, but not as high as 11. It is a good, fun song. There's no doubt about it. And uh, I know John said that the record company Capital was pushing for it to be a single, and he didn't want it to be. He thought it was way too commercial, and, you know, he wanted to be recognized as more of a rocker, and that was a little bit too poppy, I guess, in his mind. But I think it would have worked as a single at the time. Um, I would have loved to have seen the public's response yeah. uh, to that to that song as a single, huh? especially, yeah. at that, especially at that time. Yeah, as well. I think they would have had to suck it up and, and admit that they liked it. <laughs> yeah. It's so catchy. How can you not, after a couple of listens, be singing that song? Oh, mm -hmm. yoga. Right. Okay. I, I close to these choices. Yeah. 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 It's not a bad block. No. Nope. Uh, no. Uh, yeah. Over overall, a uh, uh, good block. I mean. How how can you not uh, like these songs? Uh, just uh, you know, quickly. Um, uh, sorry, Ken. Have to agree with uh, Tom and Joe on here to or it's not here today. Apple scruffs. Um, yeah, I, I've never been. I, I a tremendous fan of the song. I love the idea behind it. I love that it's for the fans and specifically the Apple scruffs who we all all love. Uh, but it always sounded kind of rushed to me the the production mm. of it and and i mean it just uh i don't know i've i've never particularly thought it was one of the stronger songs i mean maybe have it for historical reasons and but top 100 i i probably not uh i wouldn't i mean there are a lot of other once again we'll get to it in a minute mm. uh but other songs i i would have put on there instead so that was kind of the head scratcher of the bunch but the others um a jealous guy i mean that is is such a classic i the lyrics mm. are, are just you know classic john lennon i mean so con, you know just confessional honest the string arrangement mm -hmm. nikki i think that's nikki hopkins on piano as i recall just gorgeous and it is one of those songs that i never get tired of and it is overplayed on, on the radio a bit and it has been covered a lot but it's one of those as we've been talking about i don't get i just don't get tired of it it's just uh compelling um to listen to um let me roll it you know it's it it just i used to love this song <laughs> i really did it was one of my favorite tracks uh off band on the run i used to absolutely love it and then when paul started playing it in concert <laughs> Oh, my. <laughs> <Yeah, exactly. laughs> I love I love it though when he does that. <laughs> I know, exactly. And he gets into it. But when he started playing it every time <laughs> and and then it started being played on the radio even more and all, but it belongs on the list. No doubt about it. I don't know if I'd put it quite this high, um, but maybe it's the fatigue factor. But if it's your list, why does it deserve to be on the list if you do? If you feel the way about it that you do? Yeah, I guess, but I, no, because I don't hate it. I mean, no. I don't. It's still a good song. I mean, it's a it's a good song. I would still think it belongs on the list because it's a great okay. bluesy Fair. rocker. I don't hate it for anything. Okay. But I just think, oh, I just don't know. Uh, Photograph, love that song. That's that's just a perfect song for, for Ringo. Instant Karma, that's another song I never get tired of, of uh, hearing. Um, I mean, perfect Phil Spector production. Those drums are just killer. Mm. Uh, shout out to Alan White. Um, yes. And, rest uh, in peace. Yep, rest in peace. And uh, I, I quote the lyrics all the time. <laughs> In this day, I still do. I mean, the lyrics are just fabulous my sweet lord yeah main complaint why isn't it top 10 i mean yeah. i i would have absolutely put that top 10 i don't know why uh why it isn't oh yoko um kind of agree with you ken i think i would have not 
put that this that high, even though it's a fun song. I I think Oh My Love, I would have swapped mm. <laughs> places. Mm. Oh My Love is is such a beautiful song. Yeah. Um, I know I've said this about other songs, but if a man wrote and sang that for me, I turned to go. I mean, it's just so <laughs> beautiful, touching love song, and one of the, one of John's best. Um, and I think that belongs uh, where Oyoko is. Um, so uh, and, oh, and you know, I I don't dislike Oyoko. I mean, it's it's fun. It's catchy. Mm -hmm. um very sweet but uh yeah i i don't think it belongs in in this block um you know but, sure. but it's you know as you we've been saying it's it's a personal uh personal taste so you know a couple of you know a little bit of head scratching here but mostly hard to argue with most mm -hmm. of these choices hmm. well top 10 time folks oh boy mm -hmm. here we go guys this is this is we're we're getting getting serious here. Yes. Oh, we have a drum roll for the number one song. <laughs> yeah, we should. All right. So for me, for me, arguably the biggest surprise. Hmm. Number we'll 10. <laughs> number 10, Pure Smokey. I'll tell you more. Number about nine. That. <laughs> imagine. Number eight. Too many people. Number seven, isn't it a pity? It doesn't say what version, though, I don't think. And, um, <laughs> number six, Band on the Run. Number five, Mind Games, Joe. Uh -huh. Number four, it doesn't, especially when you're trying to do one of these lists. <laughs> it don't come easy. Number three, Give Me Love, Give Me Peace on Earth. Number two, God. And number one for oh. Rob Sheffield's list of the number of the 100 greatest solo Beatles songs is Maybe I'm Amazed from the self-titled or McCartney LP from 1970. So you're wearing that shirt. Yep. Yes, that's right. And that's why I oh, decided to wear uh, the, the shirt that I'm wearing today. But um, so, Joe, we are going to start with you. Oh, hoo, hoo, hoo. Yes. <laughs> Thank um, you. Because I want to lace it to your smoky. Because... <laughs> are, you, are you out of your mind, Rob? No, I mean, no, let me tell you something. I don't like pure smoky at all. I know it's a tribute to Smokey Robinson. I, I admire yeah, that. Watch it, Joe. I do not. I like Smokey Robinson too. By the way, I do. I don't I like the it. song. Don't like the song at all. Can't stand the song. Uh, it, it shouldn't. It, it wouldn't be on my list at all. Needless to say, number ten. Really, even if it's on your list, but this is all individual. It's all individual. I'd be curious to know what the rest of you think of that one. Even if you like it, the song. Uh, I think Imagine is criminal. That it's number nine. That is insane. Okay, that's another one. Um, uh, I, I, you know, I don't know if I should talk about this now or later, but let me let me say, uh, imagine in some ways to me deserves to be number one. But then again, we're talking, I'm talking completely criteria, what's supposed to be or should be rather than what you feel. I love Maybe I'm Amazed. Love it. I think if Imagine can't be number one, I'm glad it's Maybe I'm Amazed. Hmm. You know, I, I would have put maybe I'm amazed or imagine one and two. You know, I think if I was doing my list, I would imagine I'm basically saying about the anthem, the world knows it. it you know, it's become such a almost like it's almost too much of a overplayed song too because of what happened to John. It's almost like within his death it took a, a, a new kind of meaning and everything. Um, I don't know. I just think it deserves a lot higher than. Nine by far, one or two, something like that. I would have been all right with it at two, you know. Let's leave it at that. Too, uh, too many people. I really love that song. Um, uh, from Ram. Uh, I guess number eight is. I don't know if it, it it'd be my, it'd be pretty high up for me. I don't know about my top ten. There might be some other songs I like better 
that I'd stick in there, like photograph and instant karma. My sweet lord, my, my that my sweet lord, that might take the space. Isn't it a pity? Ditto. It's a beautiful song. It's so touching. It's so moving. Uh, I love everything about it. Uh, again, I don't, you know, I don't know if I would. It would be in my ten. I, you, you have to start thinking. Well, what would I? What would my ten be? If there's room, I'll put it in there, <laughs> number ten or something. If there's room, but I don't yet know what my ten are going to be. So, um, band on the run, yeah, it deserves it. It deserves being that high. Again, uh, there's that thing about I, uh, fatigue with band on the run, the song. Um, when I think how much I used to love that opening and you know and all that stuff, and the changes over to the you know if I ever get out of here part, so great the way it has all these twists and turns and sweets and different changes to it, different moods. But now it's a little played out. But yet in this case, I'm glad it's in the top ten, and I think it belongs in the top ten. Mind Games very happy to see it so high here. Number five. A little while ago, I said that I personally think I, I like it more now and enjoy it more than I do imagine. I uh, I, I think that's mostly because, it, again, it's not as played out as Imagine is. Although, arguably, Mind Games might be a, a, a better song, te technically better crafted. Who knows? Um, I don't know. Kind of contradicts what I just said about putting Imagine at number one. Number two, and then being happy with mind games at number five. It don't come easy is my favorite Ringo song. Period. Um, it would be in, it would I love it at number four. You know, uh, could be three. I don't know. Uh, I love give me love, give me peace on earth. A lot of times when people ask me what's your favorite George Harrison song, that one springs to mind immediately. But I, it's hard to say. I like so many George songs. Um, but. I, I think maybe a little a little too high for me. It, it, it you know it would be it wouldn't it, it might be in the top twenty, something like that. God, <laughs> shocker! We've talked about this song. Maybe some people remember, maybe some don't. Much as I love John, again, um, it's never been one of my favorite John songs, and I, I and I, I can't I mean understand it being number two, um, in the top ten, maybe if you like it that much. The thing to me is it's so powerful, and most of it, it hinges on the fact that he's just casting out all these things, right? It's, I think I think somebody uh, interviewed him. It might have been Jan Werner, and he, and he said, "What this litany? Where did you get this litany from?" And he said, "What's litany?" <laughs> he <laughs> says, "You know, the list of all these things. I don't. It's just basic. It's not much of a song. I mean, I love I love Billy Preston. You know, I mean, I love." The sound of it, the music of it, but it's really just like you know, t ticking off boxes, ticking off box, and that's it. I don't know, not much of a melody once you once you get starting to check off your changes, and of course it culminates with Beatles, which is like a shocker. That's the powerful dramatic moment of it. But I don't know. I just ne I thought it was never much of a song. If I, I can't, I'm mean, trying to describe and rush it. So we're getting late here. But I have just it, great thoughts, great expression of feeling, great uh, piano, you know, stuff in there. But as far as a, a, a catchy melody or something, it's not much of a song to me. Maybe I'm amazed. Like I said, number one, I'm okay with it. Uh, I, would I have picked Imagine just for because it's so much more world renowned and, and it's like a, a message for the world? Uh, uh, maybe. But. If it can't be that, I'm glad it's maybe I'm amazed. I've said before, how are you supposed to pick a best song by somebody who you loved hundreds and hundreds of songs? Mm. But yeah, for Paul, I can almost narrow it down to maybe I'm amazed. That's his best song. And let it be. And I always say, why those two for me? Because I think there are times when Paul's actually writing about like real, like really his feelings, his uh, problems, soul searching. Come a little bit more compli complex for him. I think that's why I love Maybe I'm Amazed so much, because of what he was going through at the time, trying to sort it all out with Linda's help and everything. I think it's it's fantastic. I love the studio version. I love the live version, too. Studio I like better. So I'm okay with it, number one. I think it's a good choice. You know, and, it'd be, and me, it would be one or, one or two. Those, you know, like I said, not to, to repeat it. There you go. <laughs> Let the tomatoes fly. <laughs> <laughs>
Thank you, Joe Mayo. I really enjoyed that uh, that uh, commentary you just gave us. Um, <laughs> Kittle Tool. The- <laughs> All right. Well, I like Pure Smoky, but I was shocked to see it this high. Um, I will fully admit that. Uh, I don't think it belongs in the top 10. I mean, maybe 100. Um, I I mean, really, it's it's. I love the meaning behind the song. It's a pretty song, but it does not belong at, at number 10. Um, I think, you know, I, I would have rather it seen, isn't it a pity or something? I, I mean, that's, I, I don't think it belongs in the, in the top 10. Um, I also don't, much as too many people is a good song. I don't know if it belongs in the top 10 either. I don't think, I think I would have chosen something else of, of Paul's there. Um, and um, I, I mean, I, I don't know, I think, and isn't a pity is in the, in the top 10, but I would have put, uh, swapped it out with. Uh, I'm sorry. I would have swapped out um, Pure Smoky with all my um, my sweet lord and had that. And mm-hmm. isn't a pity in there. That's what I meant. Sorry, it's getting late. Um, okay. And wait for us. <laughs> so let me clarify that. Um, so yeah, too many people. I I don't really agree with that. Um, Ban on the run. Absolutely, you can't you know can't argue with that. Same with mind games. It don't come easy, as Joe said. That's one of my all time favorite. Um, uh, Ringo songs give me love give me peace on earth um yeah that's one of the ones like I don't know if I would have picked that in the top 10 over my sweet lord great song I mean top 20 absolutely hmm. but I I don't know if I would have done that now God that was a very interesting choice um because I it, it is um definitely not you know, what you would call commercial (laughs) for sure. But it was interesting what Rob Sheffield said uh, in his uh, his sort of explanation of why he found it significant and and why he chose it. Uh, He said, God is a song for anyone who's ever had to start over as an adult after the death of a dream they believed in. Hmm. I thought was a very interesting, you know, kind of why why it's universal. Hmm. And... Hmm. You know, it's an interesting way to think about it because uh, it does kind of make it more relatable. Um, I think I would have put Imagine at number two. I kind of agree with you, Joe. I think maybe I'm amazed at number one, maybe Imagine at number two, because those two songs have had such an impact, you know, even today. Um, you know, maybe I would have put Imagine up there instead of God. But God is in a, such a powerful song that I think top 20, for sure. Yeah, it, it's definitely a powerful. I mean, I don't want to make it sound like I didn't like oh, it. Oh, no, I it, know you liked it. it but it no, I, so I, but I see what you're saying. You know, maybe you know, not it, number two. It's very powerful. But, it's but, um, but yeah, that's a little high. Um, you know, maybe not number two, but, but definitely top 20. Cause that's a, that is still such a, such a gut punch song, even to this day. So many of the songs on here are very logical uh, to put in there. But yeah, Pure Smokey. Much as I like that song, nah, wouldn't have put it in the top 10. But it's, uh, you know, and you know me, love Smokey, and I yeah. like that song. I've talked about it before. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, no, I'm good with Smokey. Yep. <laughs> but, Dad, it's Smokey. Yeah. <laughs> Remember that commercial? Yep. <laughs> <laughs> Turn it down, he used to say. What the heck? Yep. Smokey. <laughs> All right. Uh, do you want to mention number? Did you? Talk about the number one song yet, Queen? Or oh, oh, I, I said maybe I'm amazed. A uh, good choice at number one, and just that uh, I'll just say, you know, I mean, to me, that's almost like a modern, well, sort of modern. I know it's like 50 years old now or over, but great, almost like Great American Songbook at this point. Mm. I mean, it's like a standard. You know, that's that's how good it is. Um, you know, the, the, the love song. I mean, it's you know, yeah. I mean that it's that's how classic it is now so i think that was a good call okay all right cool thank you queen um yeah i mean pure smoky i mean i would have rather have the 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 three all things must pass bonus tracks in the in where we're in this spot rather than pure smoky and 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 i'm not trying to put it down um because i mean it it is not a bad song i was just really surprised that 
he felt that strongly strongly about the song. So yeah. you know, good on him, good on him for that. And that's again one of the reasons why I do like this list is because there are so many deep cuts mm-hmm. on this. And and I, you know, I I feel like I would have done the same thing because I love so many deep cuts. And, well, you, and want, all... you want risks like that. You want to see yeah. something yeah. like that. Exactly. You know? He exactly. knows the stuff. I mean, he's, right. he proved it. Right. Imagine now, I, in a way, top 10, yes, absolutely. Um, and I get, Joe, I understand what you're saying. The you know, you know, universal appeal, we all want peace. Um, we, you know, we, it's it's a very important song, even, you know, be, which became even more important after, after John's death. Um, but again, I have to put my personal feelings aside if I want to, put it if I want to rank it higher you know what I mean mm-hmm. and I don't always want to do it with with that song and I understand you know it's greatness and it, it is a really good song and I love the, his piano playing I love his vocals on this track I just you know I think I'm fine with where it is on this list mm-hmm. now too many people I kind of agree with you queen mm-hmm. you know maybe it doesn't belong in the top 10 yes I mean I know he uh he said it was uh, for the Wings fans up there when yeah. on tour one year. <laughs> yeah, and and I do now believe that he's also in that too many people pre- preaching practices. But that being said, I don't think it's it's uh, top ten. Even as much as I love this song, isn't it a pity? It is. It shouldn't be in the top ten. I don't. I don't think for myself. But uh, again, that's me. A band on the run. Yeah, I, I guess you have to put it in the top ten. Um, but then when you say you have to put it in the top 10, does that make you kind of feel like maybe you don't respect it enough, you know, right. or that's what happens. You know it's what I mean? Saying, it's a juggling, you, you juggling know, act. I have to put it in the top 10. When you say you have to put it in ten, top 10, why do you have to put it in the top 10? Is it because that everybody else respects it or do you have to put it? Are you putting it in because you truly, truly love the song? I think with my case, I, I do. Even though I'm, I, I tire of that one a little bit, Band on mm. the Run, I still lo- I love it just that I've, I've OD'd a little bit. I'm giving it right. the respect of remembering the first feelings. Right, right. Gotcha. You okay. got to go with what's in your heart. Yes, mm-hmm. I you agree know, with you. Yeah. Whether people agree with you or not. Yeah, I, I same. Yeah. Mind games, glad it's here. I mean, as as we know, since we've been doing this show, we've seen we've been seeing so much more love for mind games yeah. um, over the last over the course of the last however long we've been doing this show. Now. Six years. Six years. Wow. Um, and I'm very, very happy for that because my love for the for the album and the song has grown uh, as well. Um, and I, because I mean, a lot of times, it, you know, people's people's love can be in fact for something can be infectious, and you can you know get into it a little bit more when you see so many so many people, you know, talk highly of it, and then that makes you think, well, maybe I should go back and see what I was missing, um, if I, if it's if it's something that I haven't listened to uh, for a while. Um, it don't come easy. I, I mean, I probably, if you're looking at for to put it a uh, one Ringo song in the top 10, I don't know if maybe if I would have rotated this with photograph and maybe put photograph in the top 10 and, you know, put it don't come easy where photograph was. I don't know. I have to think on that a little bit longer. What I would have done a hundred percent is I would have swapped out my sweet Lord for give me love. I would have definitely have rotated that on my list now um don't get me wrong give me love is a great track but i i I like my sweet lord a little bit more i definitely love god and i think this is really just the commentary of where john was at that time and i think it's very important to to understand his feelings and and for for that period of time and i like what you read about what what joe or you know not joe but what rob you know wrote about the you know why he had it where he had it and i do love uh, billy preston on there i love ringo on there um the last segment you know where the dream is over i mean what a just a you know punch in the gut um when you're when you're, when you're discovering this song and um and I, John's vocals are fantastic. Would I put it the highest um John song? Maybe, maybe. I, I I like I like this in the top ten, and I like it maybe as a top two or 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 a number one. Um, but maybe I'm amazed 
we did like a so we did a show um on two legs with alan cozen about the you know the track maybe i'm amazed uh, a couple of weeks ago and you know you just listen to that song and then, again it might be some people might get fatigued on that and that's fine some people you know might like the live version over the studio version and that and that's fine too but me i love the the studio version i love that opening piano riff with the the organ in there i love paul's vocals i love his his guitar solo and joe you you've talked about like right out of the bat in a solo career this might be his best song and that was 54 years ago you know he might have came out of the gate with his greatest composition and 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 as I said, how impossible, near impossible, if not impossible, right. is that right. to pick to nail down with Paul McCartney of all people? Right, exactly. So many iconic, classic number one tracks. You know, stadium crowd pleasing songs. Does he have? You know, and then and then this here it is. That you narrow it down to maybe I'm amazed as as number one again. You know, showing his the you know the power of love, showing his 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 love for for Linda and what what she has done uh, for him at that point in time in his life, um, and that, and you feel that when you when you hear the studio version, maybe you you might get a little bit from the live version too, but I just think that studio version is just so raw and powerful. I agree. Yeah, it's got so much going for it. all the things you just yeah. said um, mm. perfectly. And you know him playing all the instruments, all the instruments himself. Right. Yeah, that's impressive. Mm. Uh, you know the, the the lyrics, the love, the devotion to your partner. Right. Start yeah. starting out a, a new start when you're kind of unsure, uh, you know, uneasy about. Right. Everything comes together. All these ingredients and, and his Gorgeous. vocal, his vocal, and his you know little scream right. voice that he does at you know the high voice. It, it's perfect. Sincere. Yeah. Yeah, mm. very sincere. There you go. Good word, Queen. Um, so, you know, all in all, I think it's a really, really good, solid top 10 minus Pierce Smokey. But, um, <laughs> Ken Michaels, I am going to give you the last word on this list. And I am waiting. <laughs> <laughs> I'm all ears. <laughs> okay, Pure Smokey. I love Pure Smokey a lot. I love most of all the direction that George Harrison was going at that time with some of his music on 33 and a third. And I know I, I mentioned this before, this, <laughs> this light jazz feel that he had. And maybe Tom Scott, who produced the album for George, 33 and a third, had a lot to do with it. Um, but I would never put Pure Smokey in the top 10. And I don't even know if I would put it in the top 100. But I still mm. love the song. And right. I love production behind it i love the instrumentation behind it i love the words of pure smoky and putting in titles of smoky robinson songs in there you really got a hold on me yeah and i'll try something new i think it's very clever what he did with pure smoky and i think that you know his vocals and his his songwriting style matched what he was going for with that jazz feel on on that song kind of like you know far east man is a lot like that mm. to me um imagine See, here's a, the classic case of fatigue factor mm. of yeah. a song that I truly respect, think the world of, love the universal message, truthfully should be a lot higher than this to me as a song. I'm wondering why it ranked as low as nine. I think most people would be shocked to see that it only was ranked at number nine. I probably would rank it higher. But, you know, it's very tough. How do you not let the fatigue factor affect where you're going to rank. Right. Mm -hmm. I would right. much rather listen to Instant Karma today than mm -hmm. listen to Imagine. Me I'd too. much oh, me too. listen to Mind Games than listen to Imagine. But Imagine is a fantastic song for what it's saying. It's got a great melody. I love John's vocals on it. There's a reason why it has endured all these years. I know Yoko has really pushed the song for various organizations and events. And a lot of people have covered the song, and it deserves to be ranked higher. Uh, you know, it's it's a real tough call here. Mm -hmm. uh, just like Joe said, I could see it at number one or number two. I just saw something where, as of last year, it was the most streamed solo Beatles song on, on Spotify, mm -hmm. Imagine was. Mm -hmm. So how can the public not feel that Imagine should be at least number one or number two? But I love the song. I have no problem with it ranking higher than number nine. Too many people I love. It would be in my top 100. 
it wouldn't be in the top 10. It's a great opening song. It's a great melody. Everything about it, the lead guitar solo, how the song ends, you know, regardless of whether it was written about John and Yoko, it doesn't matter. It's a great song. It would definitely be one of my favorite McCartney songs in the top 100, but I wouldn't rate it this high. It probably would be maybe, maybe in the top 40. Isn't it a pity? definitely be in the top 20 i don't know if i'd put it at number seven but i love the message in the song and i love the whole arrangement of it don't even mind that it's seven minutes long the first <laughs> version of all things must pass it's just a gorgeous tune and a great message in it then on the run i'm not really too tired of yet despite the fact that i hear it quite a lot still on the radio i think it's a masterful song and it's one that kind of like you feel it has to be in the top 10 it just has to. It was a big hit. It's a classic song. Still gets lots of airplay. Paul still does it in every concert. And I still haven't gotten tired of it. I'm glad that it's in the top 10. Uh, number five, I am so glad that Mind Games is ranked this highly. Mind Games, I've always said, is the most underrated solo album of, of John's career. I'm glad to see the box set coming out, <clears throat> coming out in July. Sorry. July 12th. Can't wait for it. And as a single, I thought it was a terrific single that should have done better on the charts. I think it went to 18 on the charts, but it certainly deserved to be a top 10 single. And it gets a lot of airplay now. I think that people's opinion of the song Mind Games has risen over the years. And I'm glad to see that. I have no problem with the with the Lennon songs that Rob puts here. I just wouldn't put them in this order necessarily. Uh, right. Uh, <clears throat> It don't come easy. Whenever it comes to classic Ringo that everybody knows, there's a don't come easy and photograph. Which one do you like more? I could see either one being in the top 10 and ranking this highly. I could see photograph as the number one song here. I still mm. think it's one of the greatest songs that any of the solo Beatles have done, without a doubt. Um, but it don't come easy as a classic. I never get tired of it. I love George's contribution in producing it and playing on it and writing part of it. It's just a great classic tune. Um, Give Me Love is one that I would rate very highly. I don't know if I would place it number three. And like the rest of you, My Sweet Lord is above Give Me Love for me. Yeah, yeah me too. Yep. I, I, guess. A lot of I, I said are. that Give Me Love might be my favorite, George. It always comes to mind right away, but it's the first one I think of. My, my Sweet Lord is better, a better song. Yeah. I think Give Me Love is a very important song to me now because... It was the first really big hit that George had without Phil Spector working on it. Mm. You know, so it was more a pure George Harrison production. So if you don't really like the layers of production that are on Phil's songs, like My Sweet Lord, if you want a simpler production that's more, if you want to call it pure George, um, Give Me Love is more to your liking production-wise. It's a great song and amazing slide guitar work in, in Give Me Love. I'm glad that it's here. It probably would be in my top 20, but not number three. Now, God, it's very interesting <clears throat> what you said there, kid, about what Rob said about the song. If you give it more of a universal connection, yeah, I can certainly see God being right up there. It is as powerful a song, a powerful statement as John has ever made. And the guts that it took for him to say what he said in that song and to cast aside all the all the idols of the time from the Beatles to Bob Dylan and, and Elvis. And I admire the hell out of him for, for coming up with the song. And I love the recording. I love the arrangement. Ringo's drumming is right, <laughs> right on target with what the song needed. And, uh, but it's so John to me. It's so much a song that you identify with John. I can't see other people covering god not that that should really be that important a criteria but it's so connected to john and what he was feeling at that time in his life but it still is a great composition i don't have a problem with it being ranked this highly you know and really he rob is just so spot on with the lennon songs for me between god mind games imagine instant karma's in there Although I wouldn't have put Oh Yoko as highly as I did. Jealous Guy deserves to be there. Oh My Love deserves to be there. Working Class Hero. Um, you know, I love the choices that John especially made uh, with Rob Rob made as far as John Lennon songs. 
Maybe I'm amazed. There's no doubt about it. It's a great song. I have a tough time just off the top of my head picking what would be number one because there's so many to me that I think deserve it. But for a lot of the reasons that you said, Tom, it's not only a great song, but it also tells you in Paul's simplest words where his head was at, and it's deeply personal. Maybe I'm a man, maybe I'm a, a lonely man who's in the middle of something that mm -hmm. he doesn't really understand. Simple words that a lot of us can relate to in a love relationship. You think about what he was going through at the time with the Beatle breakup and Linda was there to help him through those tough times. You put it in that context, it's even more powerful a song. The vocals that Paul has, the tremendous buildup of his vocals. I love the fade up in the intro of the song. I can certainly see why it would rank number one on Rob's list. It's still tough because Paul's done so many great songs. You know, um, when we talk about the songs that he left off here, you'll see how tough a decision it was for me. But uh, again, there are a lot of people now that point to Maybe I'm Amazed as his best song. I don't have a problem with it because it really, truly is a great song. Um, yeah, it, it was a good choice. But the beauty of this, like you said, Tom, when you throw in the odd choices, that's what makes it a unique Mm -hmm. And also where you place the songs that were the biggest hits. Should mm. they be ranked all the way high or should they be ranked <laughs> lower on the list? And some of the biggest solo hits weren't even on the top two, top 100. One of the biggest from 1976 is nowhere to be found. Yes. Yep. That's so right. you want to each go around and we'll talk yes. about what we felt. Uh. Should yeah, real quick. I know because we're running, uh, we're running yeah. long here. So, yeah. so Queen, start us off and and give us uh, a quick rundown on the songs that you would have added to your uh, to your list. Okay, let me scroll down and get my list here. Okay, so uh, yes, yeah, so for Paul, um, some of my choices include uh, "Heart of the Country." What was all that? My love, silly love songs. Mrs. Vanderbilt. Take It Away, Wanderlust, My Brave Face, Some Days, and Writing to Vanity Fair. Yeah, oh, nice. Mm. Yep. Right. So those are so mine. For George, uh, Let It Down, Beware of Darkness, This Song, Cracker Box Palace, Not Guilty, Life Itself, This Is Love, When We Was Fab, Devil's Radio, and Stuck Inside a Cloud. Mm. Uh, for John, um, I chose was uh, isolation wasn't on there, was it? I don't think yes. so. Yeah, oh, it was, was on there. Okay, I couldn't remember. Um, and uh, let's see. So I've got what you got, steel and glass, and I'm losing you. Um, and I would go for either the album version or the cheap trick version, but probably a little bit partial to the cheap trick version. Um, <laughs> for uh, for Ringo. Oh my my way to the world. Surprise, surprise. Uh Memphis in your mind, instant amnesia, never without you, and don't go where the road don't go. <laughs> nice. <laughs> All right. Very good. Mm -hmm. Joe, we'll move on with you, buddy. All right. I don't have them individually. I if I each beetle, I'll, I'll go fast. I got Junior's Farm, Paul. Uh Some Days by Paul, which is one of his greatest songs, I think. Uh, Mull of Kintyre was not on here, right? No, I don't think so. From Paul, Cracker Box Palace, George. How do you sleep by John? Despite the fact that it's snarking at Paul, it's it's a brilliant track. Um, if you know too many people can be on there, so could this. Take it away is not on there, right? Right. Take nope. it away from Paul. Wanderlust, Paul. No. Nope. Early days, Paul. House of Wax, Paul. Hmm. Uh, Way to the World, Ringo. The song Liverpool 8, I like. Ooh. Will be on my 100, mm -hmm. Ringo. Uh, for George, I put This Guitar Can't Keep From Crying. I like, I like, I like that song. Uh, for Back to Paul for The End of the End, uh, which I think is <laughs> it's so personal. And so, you know, so, uh, anyway. Also, Too Much Rain for Paul of Chaos and Creation. And I know I'm forgetting tracks, by the way. 
yeah. I even gave Andy Nichols some consideration here. I put waterfalls on that, even though it's never been a big <laughs> favorite of mine. I could see that being like a hundred or something like that. Uh, uh, Steel and glass, John. Woman is the end of the world. I think for John, it's a strong statement. Uh, great track. Uh, Buku's of blues. Uh, for Ringo, and just because. When T said the big single from 76, I forgot about it and would have put it on had I remembered. I assume you're talking about silly love songs. Yes. Uh, yes. I said, oh, gee, how the hell did I forget that? I probably forgot a lot of others, but those are the ones that I come up with. Yeah. Okay, Ken. And uh, oh, yeah. Ken, just remember, we're, we're going long on time here, my friend. So. <laughs> <laughs> I'll apply the Evelyn Wood speed reading. Uh, uh, oh, this is going to be, we'll be here all day. No, all right. From John, I put, I know, I know you are here. Yes. Nobody loves you when you're down and out. Scared. I'm losing you and grow old with me. From Ringo, I have six o'clock. Can't believe that was oh, not in there. Uh, you and me, babe. Good night, Vienna. Snookeroo. Gave it all up, which I think is a very underrated <laughs> song. Heart on my sleeve. Attention. In my car, there was nothing from Time Takes Time on there, which was ridiculous. Yeah. Way to the World should have been on there. Um, nothing from the first three Mark Hudson albums. Uh, I would have put King of Broken Hearts, um, Instant Amnesia, Never Without You, Imagine yeah. Me There, Fading In, Fading Out, Free Drinks, Liverpool 8, Not Looking Back, Here's to the Nights, You Never Know, and Free Your Soul. Okay, George, that is all. To me, the greatest love song of his solo career. The light that has lighted the world. So sad. The answer's at the end. Cracker Box Palace, learning how to love you. Love comes to everyone. Your love is forever. All those years ago. It's kind of odd that here today is in the list and all those years ago is not. And Never Without You for a tribute song is not in there. Uh, Blood from a Clone, I love a lot. Mystical yeah. Circles. Devil's Radio, When oh. It Was Fab, This Is Love, Marwa Blues, Stuck Inside a Cloud, Rising Sun, Horse to the Water. Okay. As for Paul, I'll try to make this fast. <laughs> oh, my goodness. The end of the end. Yeah. Like, yeah. So many times yeah. Could be in the top 10. Yeah. Could be, you know, among the top three greatest songs from Paul in his solo career. Yeah. Junior's Farm. How is Junior's Farm not in here? Yeah, yeah. Got Jed in there, and you don't have Junior's Farm. It doesn't yeah. make any sense. So he loves songs is not in there. Again, you know, I understand some people are probably tired of it. Um, I think it's a brilliant song. Beware My Love. Mull of Kintyre. How is oh. Mull of Kintyre not in there? Uh, daytime, Nighttime, Suffering. Ebony and Ivory. Take It Away. Through Our Love. Ballroom Dancing. Only Love Remains. Probably the greatest love song of his solo career. Footprints, Back on My Feet, My Brave Face, This One, Only Our Hearts, Hope for the Future, Coming Up, No More Lonely Nights, Tomorrow, Little Lamb Dragonfly, My Love, Wonderful Christmas Time. He's got Happy Christmas and he doesn't have Wonderful Christmas Time. Venus and Mars Rock Show, Letting Go, and Backseat of My Car, Too Much Rain, Say, Say, Say. Yeah. And, well, and come on, Christmas, Christmas, come on. <laughs> yeah. I love that song. Or I want to be Santa Claus. Yeah. And and you're right. So you know there there's so many tracks that you know we could probably forget. I mean, especially if you're just going from songs that you know. Yeah, I missed that, a lot. That you, that, yeah, that you know right off the <laughs> yeah. bat. I think everybody knows right off the bat, you know, what their you know favorites or or near favorites uh of the of the catalogs are so um you know for me obviously you know take it away early days riding the vanity fair for me is his best song of of this uh century um you know i think it's as silly as it is and as much as people make fun of it i think silly love songs is is, is one of his most important singles uh from I the agree. 70s um, you know wonderless junior's farm that's just off the top of my head. Um, wasn't really doing a, a you know deep deep dive, but I could have you know it, the song could Paul probably could have been fifty songs, um, but I wanted yeah. to try to keep it short. Ringo um, again, never without you. I think you know might be you know one of his best later day tracks. Um, 
rack my brain. I, I adore. Um, uh, is it um, is it wrong for so long? Is that the the official? Uh, wrong for so long. Yeah, yeah. I, yeah. I've always loved that That's track. A good one. Yeah, I would. I definitely would have that one on here. Uh, for John, uh, I know, I know. <laughs> it's just, um. You know, ever since I gave that song, a, a, you know, another chance, I think we we're talking about mind games in it, um, you know, many years ago. And it was just it, it finally clicked for me and you know, I'm kicking myself in the ass for waiting for so long for that song to click for me. <laughs> but, <laughs> but I love it. I adore. I know. I know. And you are mm -hmm. here. Um, Joe, and I, I agree with you about the, you know, about the controversial one song. I I, I think. You know, I think it's an important message, and I think women should embrace it, I guess. I mean, but that's just my opinion. Maybe they shouldn't. You know, who am I to, to say something well, like that? Well, it's in favor of women. It's, it's yeah, defending exactly. them. Yeah, yeah exactly. Um, uh, for 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 George, you know, we, we were talking about this before we started. Nothing from Cloud9, which was really odd to me, but again that's again it's his list this song i've always loved that's the way it goes beautiful girl i've always i've been a big champion of uh cheer down i i think um oh, I, oh, I geez, think was, yeah. yeah was another one that didn't make it and, and <laughs> you know i'm glad you said uh, excuse me i'm glad you said uh blood from a clone ken because um my aunt gave me that album back in the um mid to late 80s and uh I, I I just from the second I heard that song I adored Blood from a Clone, hmm. and uh, still still do from this day. But uh, well, Tommy, you forgot an important one. I was surprised. Karina Crory, you didn't put on. That. Oh well, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. Well, yeah, you a, know. These little jokes. Uh, you know? Yeah, right. No, as much as I adore that song, I mean. <laughs> <laughs> I, I I don't. It definitely wouldn't. Uh... Oh shoot! I forgot a really important one. Magneto and Titanium, yes. man. Yeah, yeah somebody somebody told me that somebody they knew yeah. I was going to cite that as my number one. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, uh, yeah, that. and that joke's kind of dragged a little bit, so I've been giving up on that one. <laughs> <laughs> um, oh right. man. But uh, thank you again, Rod Shefford, for giving us something uh, to have two uh, two shows for. And yes. and any look, anytime you did, you can do the list and articulate why you have those songs um, on that list um, is, is is very impressive uh, to me. And I really enjoyed uh, talking about these uh, tracks with with you guys and uh, and and everybody listening to the uh, to the shows. Uh, thank you very much uh, for doing that. Um, yes, Ken. I just wanted to point out one thing, because uh, I think that we were alluding to this in our last show. If there's one observation that's, a, for me, a criticism of this list, and by all means, I enjoy lists like this, whether I agree with them or not. Right. The top 18 hmm. are all from the 70s. Yeah. Okay, good. Fact, good yeah. yeah, 43 of the top 50 are from the 70s except wow. a piece of chance which is 69 so right and right. 77 out of the top 100 are from the 70s mm. so it kind of tells you where rob's head is at most mm. of the great stuff from the solo beatles came from the first decade and there's a lot of beatle fans that feel that way uh -huh. i kind of wish that you know there shouldn't have been a rule that says you must have an even amount from each decade but you can tell that aside from what he put from Double Fantasy and Milk and Honey here is very little from the solo Beatles in the 80s. The only thing right. from Paul is Temporary Secretary here, here today. today. So bad. Right. And I also wanted to say, because I was I said in the last show I wanted to talk about So Bad. I love the song a lot. It's a really nice song. It's a simple song. I love Paul's bass. I love the video with Ringo in it. But when you're talking about love songs, are you really going to tell me So Bad is better than my love? That so bad is better than no more lonely nights. Is my love not in this? I don't think it was my in this. My love is not in here. No, oh, no. Let's add my love to my list. <laughs> okay. yeah. Is it yeah, is it better than through our love, or only love remains? Well, you know, it, it, it's better. If it's better got so so bad is better than through our love to me. <laughs> to me, it's better than through our love just to me. Okay. <laughs> mm -hmm. All right, but. Um, I mean, you could tell, like we said, nothing from yeah, Cloud9, yeah. nothing from the Mark Hudson albums. Right. It's very scattered once you get past the past the seventies. So um, I kind of wish there was a little bit more 
from the last 44 years, but he's got to be truthful to, to the way he feels. So yep. that's right. And maybe right. we should uh, concentrate a little bit more on the eighties uh, here um, from us uh, and on future shows. Um, you know, I don't think maybe we can give a little bit more love um, uh, to maybe do something like this, uh, you know, for future shows. I'm all for that. Uh, you know, <laughs> I mean, I'll talk, you know, eighties is, you know, uh, the, the, the decade that Kit and I uh, discovered. Uh, Brady's the babies. I'll defend <laughs> spies like us. I'll defend it. <laughs> so, uh, so that being said, uh, great, uh, great job, guys. I, I'm, you know, thankful that uh, I had the opportunity to talk to you guys with the, the with about these lists. Uh, let's run down and 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 see what everybody's doing. Uh, Joe, you know, you you like to uh, start and get to get it yeah, out of the way. Yeah, so these days I'm actually having more stuff yes. than before. But anyway, <laughs> uh, okay, on my regular channel on YouTube, which is called Mean Mister Mayo, uh, I just did two videos about the new John Lennon Mind Games EP. Uh, talk about the tracks that are on there, and I. Uh, Show you what they look like and everything. Show the, uh, can you show the record again, real quick? Um, uh, well, anyway, I won't show that the record, but I'll show this. Here it is. Uh, That's I, do, I, yeah. I did a couple of videos on this, so it's coming out on record store day this coming Saturday, uh, the 20th. Um, also, uh, you know, I did a video on Ringo's new song, February Sky, uh, and I have live streams over at Mean Mr. Mayo. At just about every morning at 7.30 a.m. Eastern for a couple of hours. So a lot of nonsense goes on there, but it's kind of like a, a free-for-all kind of thing. So I do that. Then I have a movie channel, if you like movies and television shows, called Mayo's Movie Mayhem. And uh, let's see what I did there. We, well, first of all, Sherlock Holmes films. Lately, I've been watching Sherlock Holmes films starring Basil Rathbone. I'm talking about those. I've uh, been showing a lot of Planet of the Apes, if anybody likes science fiction, Planet of the Apes memorabilia. And finally, um, uh, Tom and I do a movie talk live show uh, just about every Wednesday at 9 p.m. Eastern. Uh, Tom, I don't know if we don't talk if, you, if you're going to be on this one or not. Let me know, you yep, know if you think we'll you're going to make it. Yep. And that's it for me now. I think I've got it all. Okay. Uh, Queen? All right. Well, thank you, Tom. Well, uh, we're continuing with uh, putting out those toppermost of the poppermost episodes. We've had to go to sides A, B, and C because <laughs> uh, since uh, March, there have been more Beatles songs on the charts, obviously, not only in England, but in America. And uh, so we've had to cover more and more songs. So we've been releasing episodes in different parts so all you have to do is just go to toppermost of the poppermost.net and you can catch up on all the episodes we're um coming out with our april episodes right now uh and so uh, please just go to our site uh and uh you can catch up on all the episodes there uh, i am also getting ready to teach my next class uh, as i mentioned last time it's part four the british invasion this time talking about the 70s, 80s, and beyond. If you like punk, new wave, uh, that sort of thing, this is the class for you. And so uh, so you just have to register. Um, and uh, it, with uh, Monmouth University, I'll have the links on uh, our page. I think it's already up there, in fact, on um, the, uh, the page, uh, Talk More Talk Facebook page, as well as uh, my own page. And uh, speaking of the Talk uh, More Talk page, you can actually find us uh, of course, right here on this YouTube uh, channel. If you haven't already, please subscribe. Uh, and thank you all of you who already have and who follow this uh, this show regularly. We couldn't do this without you. And uh, if you uh, rather uh, just hear the audio version, you can find us on virtually any podcast uh, platform you can think of. You can also uh, find us on uh, Facebook. If you like our Facebook page, you will be notified of all of our upcoming episodes. And we also post other stuff on there as well, uh, news and, and stuff we're doing. So you can follow us there. Uh, we're on Twitter, Talk More Talk One, the number one. Uh, we have a website, uh, talkmoretalk.com. And you can also email us uh, at talkmoresolotalk.com if you have feedback uh, and topics you'd be interested in seeing. Uh, on our show. If you have ideas, uh, you can uh, contact us there. And uh, I think that's everything. Okay, great. Thank you, Queen. Ken, what you got going? Okay. 
when you do that class on 80s and punk, are you going to get a punk hairdo for that? Uh, you know, I might do a faux hawk. You know, I can do like a thing where you kind of slick your the size of your hair. So I might do that. Okay. You know? Maybe I not was the thinking full you thing, could but do a like a Wendy O. Kind of thing. Yep, there, <laughs> there you go. <laughs> I could see that. <laughs> sure. Okay, on my uh, YouTube channel, which is Ken Michaels Radio, I just did a brand new interview with Tom Brennan, who is a big Bad Finger fan. Yes, he has he a is. Movie called BadFingerLibrary.com. I know he was on one of your shows, right? Two Legs? Uh, he, yeah, we, we, we saw a few years ago, we talked to him about bootlegs. Yeah, big bootleg oh. guy, too. Yeah. Okay, well, um, he has been behind a lot of the recent Bad Finger and Pete Ham releases that have been in limited quantities, okay? But this is the new Pete Ham CD, Gwent Gardens. It's all just Pete playing every all the instruments on all the songs, except one song, Ron Griffiths from Badfinger, is on there playing bass. And there's 18 tracks altogether, 14 of which were never released by Badfinger. The other four were. And we talk about this new CD, as well as his involvement with the recent uh, releases from Badfinger and Pete Ham. And um, that's on Ken Michaels Radio. And uh, also on my website, kenmichaelsradio.com, where I have trivia every single week, um, that CD is going to be one of the prizes to give away. So if you're a big Badfinger fan or a Pete Ham fan, well, you got to be a Pete Ham fan. If you love, if you love uh, Badfinger, you can win that on my website. Um, on things we said today, we did a recent show with Dana Klosner, who is the author of this new book, Beatlemania Lives On. Super fans in the 21st century, of which Kid O'Toole has a few pages, talked about her, her history. Um, That's a great book. <laughs> definitely is. John Bazzini is mentioned, my good friend, who... Nobody does more to let you know about Beatle books that are coming out than John Bazzini. That's for sure. Um, so he's in there. So we did an interview with her. We're going to be doing a show next week. We don't know yet what it's going to be, but there will be a show next week uh, on things we said today. On Every Little Thing, I just finished a brand new show, which is a Beatles travelogue show. Oh. So I also have cities, states, or countries mentioned in there. Find out what two George Harrison solo songs, the titles are the names of countries. Mm. And so what songs will make the cut, which won't. It's a whole hour of that. And um, if you want to listen to every little thing, the easiest way to do so is to go to WFDU's website. That's Fairleigh Dickinson University's website. They post the last two shows that they have aired on the radio station. Um, on their archival page, type in every little thing. You'll have two shows there that you can listen to on demand whenever you feel like it. It's, a, it's at um, wfdu.fm. And like I said, my website is kenmichaelsradio.com. Go there for Beatles trivia. There'll be a new one posted later tonight. Still thinking about what that's going to be. <laughs> I'll come up with something, though. It'll but there's awesome. one of 10. What's that? It'll be awesome. Okay. <laughs> It'll be about some comment that one of you made on tonight's show, probably. <laughs> oh. So I'll have to go back and listen. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> That'll take too long. <laughs> <laughs> so again, that's KenMichaelsRadio.com. Please subscribe to all the channels. Ken Michaels Radio. Things we said today. And talk more talk. And two legs. Mm. And mean Mr. Mayo. Yeah. <laughs> all right. Great. Well, uh, two legs, uh, busy, busy, busy. Uh, here, I can hit something. <laughs> Got to go back here. Um, three weeks ago, or well, two and a half weeks ago, we we started a brand new series called Iconic Song Series, and that's gonna that was with Alan Cozen. But but future episodes will also have in Adrian Sinclair on there as well. We started with the track. Maybe I'm amazed. Um, uh, whether or not we go continue in chronological order, I, we're not 100 percent sure yet. But uh, but we'll see. We had a great time talking with uh, Mr. Cozen uh, about uh, the track. Maybe I'm amazed. Um, uh, Ten days ago, or whatever it was, we did uh, the episode on the recent bootlegs of Band on the Run. There have been two. And we talked about the one that is, is part of the. Um... Oh, why am I dropping his, his name? The engineer. Um... Jeff Emmerich. Je oh, thank you, Jeff Emmerich. And then part of these were from his estate. And these were the mixes that he did 
uh, before leaving Lagos. So they're even a little bit more underdubbed than, say, what we got uh, with the the uh, Band on the Run 50th Anniversary Edition. Um, so there was some really good stuff on, on that uh, boot. Um, last week, or this just past weekend, we, we welcomed Caitlin Larkin on the show, and we talked about her uh, rise to fame, if you will, <laughs> yeah. um, and all of her success. Uh, we were, you know, very happy to talk to her, and um, uh, she's she's wonderful. Uh, it was great hanging out with her at the fest uh, this past February, and um, she's still cons considering whether or not she's going to go to Chicago. So we shall see about that. Uh, future episodes, we're definitely doing part two of the Iconic Song series. Uh, we just need to get a date here. And then we're going to be talking about the, one of the interviews that's in this, the new Peter Brown uh, book here. Uh, it's an interview that um, Stephen Gaines uh, conducted in 1980 with uh, Paul McCartney. Uh, started reading it. It's, it's he gave look. Paul gave some great interviews in the 1980s uh, before he started doing his uh, you know usual answers for everything. And there's some very candid, very candid interviews where he really did speak his mind. And um, you just don't see those kind of interviews anymore. Uh, from 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 Paul. So uh, we we're going to probably tackle that next. Um, please look us up on YouTube as well. We're really getting close to the 2K um, uh, subs, and uh, we'd like to hit that soon. Uh, we're glad you guys are enjoying the show. Uh, so please subscribe to Legs A Paul McCartney podcast, and the audio uh, is doing well as 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 well. So thank you for however you listen or watch. The show, this show, uh, Two Legs, Joe's and, and Ken's and, 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 and Queen's, um, we really appreciate everybody that uh, watches us or listens to us, whatever way you prefer. So that being said, let me get back to my other page where I was. Um, so, uh, oh, geez. This is a show in itself. <laughs> yeah, this is, I think we're all tired here. Uh, we're, yeah, yeah, it's absolutely. almost three hours in. But anyways, uh, I'm talking, you know, for, for the Queen, Kittle Tool, Joe Mayo, Ken Michaels, I'm Tom Hunyadi saying, no reason to cry, no need to be sad at the end of the end. <laughs> Take care, everyone. Cheers.